Welcome back to Two Brothers Comics. We have an awesome night ahead of us. We're bringing back the comic book Babylon. We know it's been gone a week, but we have some awesome topics to discuss tonight. I have two huge stacks of comic books to show off, and we're going to have a couple of guest hosts. So hit the All right, guys. So tonight, uh, Dustin, he is on vacation. So you guys are going to be hanging out with me. And I have a couple of guest hosts joining us uh, very soon. Uh, we have Josh from Haven Comics and then one special guest that we'll, we'll announce when he shows up. So I'm excited about that. But let's say hello and say what's up to all you guys in the chat. So uh, Tosh, what's going up? What's going on, my friend? Ooh, that's weird. So we are using a brand new uh, streaming platform tonight. So if it looks a little bit different, that's why. Um, now let's see here. Uh, Nick, the future two bros, 5k fight champion. What are you doing to prepare for the upcoming battle? Man, I'm about down about 30 pounds. So, uh, I'm getting ready to whoop some tail. I'll tell you that much. We just got to hit that point. Uh, what's going on, Ruben? How you doing? James, what's happening? Dan, that's right. Um, so this is different, man. This, this new set setup is different a little bit. <laughs> I went to the back alley dressed in all black, climbed up the fire escape, went in through a broken window, snuck by Skeff Comics on the second floor, made it to the elevator, chopped up <laughs> the security guy again. Oh, and then I'm guessing he made it. Boom. And I'm in the building on the fifth floor with popcorn soda and uh, doing it big with the kids. So that's what I'm talking about. Uh, Joseph Johnson Jr. What's up? How's it going, my friend? Uh, let's see. All right. Hello. What's up Mars? And, and I, I asked in the chat how everybody thought about the new emojis I put up for all of the members. So, uh, if you were not a member and you're seeing all of the new, um, emojis there in the chat, um, if you join the channel, you get a chance to use those, but everybody seems to be liking them. So what's up, Brian? Hey, here we go. James Sovic. What's happening? Uh, let's hide that comic-con what's going on, man. So earlier this week, I posted a video to the members and he brought up a good point and it was actually the Marvel trading cards video. So thanks man for that. Austin, what's up comics by the cover, man. I was watching, uh, one of his videos earlier today about the comic Tom 101 live stream. So that's awesome. No, it is not Skeff, but don't worry about it. Well, do worry about it, James, but it's not Skeff. We'll show it off whenever he gets here. What's up, Beans? How was vacationing, Nick? By the way, how has the training for the fight been going? What have you been doing to prepare? Let the people know. So for everybody that's in the chat that does not know, if we hit 5,000 subscribers uh, by, was it July 1? I almost want to say June 1 because we're getting pretty close. Um, Dust and I will be boxing uh, it was the dumbest thing I ever thought I would ever agree to. I didn't think we had a chance. And then pretty sure we'll end up hitting 5K. Uh, it's looking like maybe April is what we're we're, we're thinking. So we'll see. Um, vacation was good, though. Vacation was good. Glad to be back. Uh, glad to be back. Uh, Lo-Fi, what's up? There will be an argument tonight. That's the beautiful thing is there will, in fact, be an argument tonight because I specifically am going to bring on a guy that – is a diehard Wally West fan. So for you guys in the community that know, huge diehard Wally West fan, and he and I will be fighting over whether or not Barry Allen or Wally West is the best Flash. So you guys will certainly be getting an argument. Um, that is for sure. Um, all right. That's right, Austin. Nick's running the show, uh, and it's going to be a good show. Look at this. We're streaming in 1080. Hopefully the audio is great. Uh, you guys wouldn't get this if Dustin was running it, so... Uh, shadow boxing, Rocky montage. Nah, man, we're not getting none of that. Uh, <laughs> look, so if you guys know anything about Eddie Hall and Thor, um, uh, what's his name? They're doing the big, uh, uh, fight for strong men. And, uh, you know, you don't ever see what Eddie Hall is doing. He only lets you get a little bit. So mm, that's, that's what it is with Nick. You guys will never know. No, you're good, Comic-Con. It, it was great. That's why I posted up to members. So if stuff like that happens, I can go, you know what? You're right. Let me let me redo it. Uh, wheelchair Superhero, what's going on, my friend? Uh, yeah, Dustin's creeping in the chat. Dustin's 
Austin, I can't tell. <laughs> Absolutely, guys. Barry Allen all day. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I may, uh, I'm, I may throw up some Kung Fu. <laughs> oh man. All right. Let's see. Is it Legion? It is not Legion. It's Burke family 54 comics. If he shows up, he may get scared, not show up. I hope he's watching. He's nervous. He doesn't want to have this argument. Audio and video quality is great, but your mic is awesome. Notice the big upgrade when you got it. Thanks, man. I do appreciate that. That's why we're doing. Uh, that's why we're we're buying these new things to hopefully try to make a better improvement. So, um, what's up, Adrian? Comics with Maddie. Um, oh, sorry, guys. This this new system's a little bit weird. Uh, there we go. Comics with Maddie. How's it going, my friends? All right. All right, so let's let's jump into the show. Um, so Josh should be on soon, and then of course we're going to have Burke Family Fifty Four Comics jumping on. Uh, they both had some stuff going on, uh, so they're going to be running a little bit late. But all right, so. This is just me, so I can't run the chat and show off the book. So if you're commenting and I miss it, I apologize. But got some awesome new books, some new Star Wars books. Uh, if you saw the Star Wars uh, video I posted, was it Friday? I don't know, man. We've been putting out a lot of content, uh, so it's hard to keep up with it all. So, um, Jay, what's up, my friend? Hope you're doing well. Um, all right, so the first book, boom. Check that out. I love that. So in this, uh, I purchased these from uh, Little Beans. Beans. Uh, oh, there we go. The camera is not wanting to pick it up. Come on, camera. The autofocus is too good. Anyways, Mace Windu Jedi number five, or Jedi Jedi of the Republic number five. So this is what, guys? This is Ahsoka Tano uh, first appearance in the Marvel canon. It's not um, Clone Wars one, but it's still a pretty cool book. Then we have Thrawn number one. I love this cover. Darth Vader uh, 14, another awesome cover for sure. X-Wing, the Star Wars uh, X-Wing Rogue Squadron number 25. And then also, oh, come on, focus now. It only wants to pick up faces, number one. So that's cool. Super pumped to get those books. And man, I still got a whole stack of stuff I haven't even been able to show off, but do have some pretty cool Captain America books and Submariner books I'm going to show here in a second. And then, of course, Star Wars, the Marvel UK collection. So found this on um, Instagram scrolling through. I think Gardner Comics was selling it uh, for super, super cheap. So was able to snag that. And then finally, guys, was able to grab the Volume 3 Omnibus. Uh, so I don't know. If I had shown those on a live stream yet, um, now for the floppies and some of the picks up pickups this week, I'll go quick on these. The third printing for the Star Wars High Republic. I was finally able to pick up the two retailer incentives for a Canto I was not able to get originally. Uh, so excited to have those. Then we have X Men Legends number one. Haven't read it yet, but I'm excited to dive into this. Um, it's got an interesting storyline concept. So if you've read it, let me know. And I know a lot of people uh, still haven't even gotten their books because of all the bad winter weather. King in Black number four. We'll talk about this, but I think this one was honestly a letdown for me. But we'll get into it. Orcs from Kaboom. I actually quite like this one a lot. It uh, was was really nice. Uh, it was a good story. Uh, Thor number 12, probably one of the best books out right now. Uh, Firepower number eight, another really good book, but it's kind of slowing down for me. Um, but we'll talk about it. High Republic number two. Uh, this is um, an older book, but Venom 33, because I haven't got a chance to talk about it. This book, guys, check it out. Department of Truth number one. We dropped the video, and everybody in the world, I think, knows James Tynan. Um, his series has been optioned. That doesn't mean a whole lot yet because it literally could be in development for years. But what I'm thinking about doing, guys, is if anytime somebody super chats, we put them in a drawing at the end of the night for a box of comics, which tonight would include this one. Um, I'm just trying to think of a way to give back for people who do, you know, donate to the channel via super chats. And I think 
you know, what do you guys think? Any dollar ninety nine super chat puts you in enter one time, and and this tonight would come with a copy of Department of Truth number one. So let me know in the comments if that's something you think you're interested in doing. And I hope Dustin's still watching. I hope he's still watching because look at this. Boom. Submariner number six. Look at that. Would you look at that? Hoo -hoo. That's nice. That's nice. And I believe Dustin sold his earlier this year and does not currently have a copy. But guess who does? This guy. <laughs> and then Submariner 15. Just some goodness. I love these Submariner, Submariner covers. Submariner 14. All right. And then this one's really cool. This is one I've been eyeballing for quite some time at Josh's. Tales of Suspense 98. Classic Captain America Black Panther cover. Um, just a glorious book. So... I've been eyeballing it for quite some time. Decided to pull the trigger on it this week. And then we have last run number two. Hopefully you guys got a chance to read this. This was, I'm not going to lie, man. This was a lot darker than I thought it was. Dustin did a review on it, but it was pretty dark. And then we have the glorious Star Wars Insider 200, uh, the Peach Momoko Mandalorian, and Grogu on the cover there. Um, I thought it was a pretty cool cover. I'm not really a huge fan of her work, but in this case, I, I went ahead and picked it up. I liked it. Uh, so then I have two more things here, and then we'll jump back into the chat. All right, and then we have Ned, Lord of the Pit. So this is actually a donation by Haven Comics, my local comic shop, Josh. This is going to go in this month's Bro Box, uh, and this is a hardcover. It is Ned, Lord of the Pit, so it's a pretty cool story. Uh, Josh and I'll talk about it a little bit later, but he donated this. So super thankful to him. And then I got one more book, Captain America 101. Uh, it is an old CGC universal label, but it's a seven five. Uh, but, and it's not really worth a whole lot, man, but I just like that cover. I do. So some cool Captain America, some cool Submariner and some tales of suspense this week. I'm digging it. So, um, haven't gotten a chance to show a lot of stuff off the last couple weeks because we didn't do for do one for Valentine's Day. And then, of course, I was on vacation one week. So I'm glad to be able to jump on here by myself and show Dustin up a little bit. So hopefully he's still watching. Um, but let's check out, go back into the chat a little bit. All right. Yeah, I love those yellow covers. Yeah, man, these, these uh, Star Wars three packs. Oh, man. You know what happened to Collect Your Way, Dustin? That's real... Uh, Real, real, real condescending comment there, my friend. Come on now. Been on a Walmart search uh, for Star Wars The High Republic. Three packs, three different stores, and only found one. You know, I've been thinking about going through and checking out um, Walmart, but I just don't go to Walmart, Walmart much at all. All right, let's see. This may be easier. This may be easier. All right, all right, all right. So I saw the have speed bags. All right, don't forget to hit the like button. Smiley Tori, what's going on? Watching Star Wars Rebels. Uh, so Jay, man, this chat is not working well in this new stream. So forgive us. I'm trying it out new, and it's not showing off super chats or anything. So, all right, so that's a great idea. I'm assuming you guys are talking about the super chat idea that any dollar ninety nine puts you in. At the end of the night for a drawing. If so, we'll we'll do it tonight, and then uh, that copy will will go in it tonight. What's going on, Flash? I hope the the robot. No, I think it was the was it was it you the one the robot? There's two flashes in the chat all the time. I think it was you, or maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was Flash by night. I'm not sure. I know your name though. All right, so let's see. Love the Canto. Yeah, man, I was super pumped about the Canto. Uh, let's see. Panda said he wants to chart at the title on winter before the bro fight. My money's on Panda. Look, he can fight Dustin all day long. I'm only fighting one time if I have to, and that's it. Done. That's it. Josh, I don't think they're ready for this yet. <laughs> tiger shark. That's right, Dustin. Did you see the tiger shark? I mean, it's no king shark, but hey, 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 it is what it is. Um, hey beans. All right. So for running out, where's Justin, the dad of the show, 
So Justin, I was instructed to say this, creative differences and contracts dispute, take it for what it is. That's just what I was told to say. There's nothing negative going on or wrong. Um, just has to take some time, uh, take care of some personal things, Panda pause. I may, hey, $1.99, man, we appreciate it. So right now we got Beans and Austin in there. Oh, you still have yours, Dustin? I thought you had to sell yours. Dang. Dang. Oh, well. All right. So let's see. You guys could do some cool training videos. <laughs> Man, nobody wants to see a couple of big dudes running around. All right. So I walked into the store, straight to the collectible spots. They didn't have it right back to the car and on to the next door. That's right, man. I'm a collector of the finest things. Yeah, okay, you collect Mortal Kombat. Nobody even cares about those. And what do you guys think about Mortal Kombat's trailer this week? I tell you this much, it was no Invincible trailer. Have you all seen the Invincible trailer? That was good. Oh, man, it was good. Um, Uh-oh, CJ, all right? He's getting in on it. So at the end of the night, and you don't have to... You don't have to stay all night to, to be entered in. We'll, we'll reach out to you. Um, so no worries there at all. All right, so Burke said he's going to be on in 15. What's Invincible? Man, you know, Tosh, I didn't care about the Mortal Kombat trailer. So Invincible, Invincible. Well, that was only slightly embarrassing to drop all the stuff. Greatest comic book ever. So Invincible is this right here, guys. All right, so Invincible is this comic book. These were courtesy of Justin. This was a Christmas present he got us. This, and I read all 150 or 45. How many issues was it? Was it 155, 154, something like that? Maybe it was only 144. But anyways, I read it all last month, and I'm telling you guys, this is by far one of the best comic book stories I've ever read. Um, I'm on a mission this year to read one full indie series in a month. So last month was Invincible. This month is Fables. I'm struggling with Fables, though. I am. And the next month, I'm either going to do Why the Last Man, or I may buy that Spawn Compendium coming out this month and read all of that so that uh, um, when this new Spawn universe comes out, I know exactly what's going on and I'm ready for it. So um, we can talk about that for a little bit. What do you guys think in the chat about the Spawn universe kicking off? Spawn universe is basically Todd McFarlane just announced this over the last few days. And it's four total series. So we're going to have a Spawn's universe, number one. And then we're going to have, what was it? King Spawn. Let's see. I got it pulled up right here. All right. So we have Spawn. That's going to be one of the ongoing. Gunslinger Spawn, The Scorched, and then King Spawn. Uh, and he's going to have some just crazy, crazy artists working with him and, and writers. So Mark Silvestri, Frank Quietly, Sean Gordon Murphy. Sean Gordon Murphy on Spawn, that's going to be awesome. Jonathan Glapton, Jason Sean Alexander, Marcio Takara. Um, let's see, Paulo, I can't pronounce that last name. Steven Segovia, Ben Oliver, Todd McFarlane, of course. Sean Lewis, Donnie Cates. Puppeteer Lee, Alice Scott, uh, Kevin Keane, David Finch. Um, so, I mean, that's Mike Del Mundo. Uh, I mean, those are some pretty big names. Greg Capullo, of course, Jason Scott Campbell. So what do you guys think about the, the Spawn universe? I know some people were like, no, no. Uh, you know, we don't need any more Spawn. But, I mean, he was super excited about this. And I don't think they have all the details because you can tell, like, even the graphics weren't done all that great. I mean, you think Image would put out some amazing graphics. But um, I'm pumped about it. Uh, so I really do want to read that entire Spawn compendium and all the way up to issue 316 or so before um, it comes to start coming out in June. So plenty of time for that. Um, now let's see. It sounds like we're having a super chat war in here. Let me see what's happening. Let me see what's happening. We need all the spawn. And I, I know one person that was pumped about the spawn, Austin LeMay, for sure. 100%. Um, so CJ, Adrian, thanks so much for the super chat. Um, and then where are we at? 
I was disappointed it wasn't a movie too. I was very disappointed because I'll be honest with you, when he said the third biggest um, comic book or announcement in his comic book career, but I guess the way he phrased it, he was discussing specifically image comics and spot. I don't know. I was really excited uh, thinking it was going to be a movie, but there was the one gentleman on the, on the post that was like, Hey, I, uh, I know what it's going to be and this is what I think. So, and I gave him a shout out in the movie. Um, but I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to read it all. Um, would you guys be interested in doing like a review of spawn, you know, maybe a couple of story arcs at a time or something like that. If I posted those up, I have one ready to go for invincible, but the inv other invincible video we did didn't do very well. So I'm not sure if I want to post it up or not, but let me know what you guys think about that. Um, now let's see, Dan, thank you for the super chat, my friend. Uh, you the man. Um, yeah. I, I think they should have included a movie on that too. I absolutely do. I absolutely think they should have. Um, a speech to respond. Yeah, I, it's crazy. I can't believe you don't have a single spawn book, uh, Burke. Most people do. At least spawn issue number one. I think there are few covers or comic books, even most comic book collectors don't know. But when you see that spawn number one, you know what it is. So um shattered glass comic review what's up tyler hope you're doing well um and man you did well good man the voice video i don't like seth brogan being in the voice cast that's that's just me i don't think he's gonna be a good good alan um yep absolutely all right so nosh if a person wanted to get it reads pod catch up where would they start so if you watched my Don't Miss the Spec video from like last month, I talked about the Spawn uh, compendium coming out in color. It, I think it comes out next week, actually. It's, it's the 24th, something like that. And that would be a great start because you can probably pick it up for nearly half price on like cheap graphic novels or something like that. It's going to be like a soft cover, um, uh, obviously, collection of compendium. And I actually have a Fables version of what it will look like back here. But that would honestly be like a super great way um, to probably get in it for cheap and at least get the, I think it's the first 50 or so issues without really investing much more than maybe 30, 40 bucks. Unless you go, well, I don't know if Comixology or something has it digitally where it's part of their, their unlimited uh, version, but maybe. Rogan is Alan surprised me, but I think maybe him being a more regular non goofy voice might. Yeah, and see, I thought it was going to be um, Mark Hamill. So, eh. Eh. That's what I was excited for. Yes, it does look really, really good. Nope, do not have Spawn. Yeah, I would, I would check out that Spawn compendium. Okay, I will. And I'll show you guys. Um, let me see. I'll pull it up here real quick. Spawn, Compendium. Oh, I can't spell. All right. Uh, let's see. It may have already come out. It looks like it may have already. Nope, March 2nd. So it's when it's going to be released via Amazon. So let's share the screen and see if I can show you guys. Chrome tab. Share. All right, so here it is, guys. Oh, look, read with our free app. Okay, but you're still going to have to buy it. Um, let's see. Show on stream. There we go. The comic book, Babylon. So, Spawn Compendium Color Edition, Volume 1. Uh, this is going to collect, let's see, issues 1 through 50. So, it's it's listed at $59.99, $53.99. Let's see what, like, cheap graphic novels. And then if you use Jim Mint's code, you get like free shipping on your second order or something. So let's see what's going to happen here. Um, spawn. Pendium. We're going to go through our normal staff reviews and all of that. I'm just trying to get Josh or... Um, oh, wow. Wow. Look at that. Out of stock already. So, uh, well, maybe they don't actually post it, but it's listed at $41.99. So... That's not too bad, but you're going to have to pay shipping on that, I'm sure. So, But there it is, guys. There it is. I just got here. After, what's up, Dirty Ways? 
channel member. What's going on, man? Um, just got here. I have two spawns, but I like to have 10 readers come in the mail. Wish I had number one. Yeah, man. Number one is a pretty cool book, but, um, like I said, I think honestly, man, this, uh, um, and this is cheap graphic and I'll just actually command C post in there. So if you guys do want to look at it, um, there you go. There you go. You can just click that link and it should take you right there and you can bookmark it, but you can just come back here. Can imagine using Angela anymore or is she just a part of the Marvel universe now? Honestly, I don't know. I really don't know. I didn't hear him talk about her much. Um, but I think Austin would be the guy to ask. Angela's all Marvel rumor is she'll be in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Isn't, is it Spawn 9? Is it Spawn 9 or Spawn 4 that's her first appearance? Which one is it? Austin will know. She's Marvel. Okay, so everybody's like, ah, she's Marvel. She's Marvel. Cool, cool. Um, let's see. What What do you mean you don't need a Spawn movie yet? Everybody needs a Spawn movie. Come on, every everybody. And, but I tell you what, the Spawn um, TV show, whew, that was uh, the one from HBO, man. That was a good show. I really did like that. I liked it a lot, to be honest with you. Um, it was a little dirtier than I expected, though. Um, but so anyways, guys, um, let's talk about Department of Truth. So this is one we're going to be giving away in that super chat box tonight. So anybody that super chats $1.99 or more, um, every time it's a $1.99 increment, we'll put you multiple times in the drawing for it. And then this tonight will include this. But what do you guys think about this news? Um, and I think it's important to realize that even though it's been optioned, I mean, it could take a while, right? So this thing's going to heat up right now, and then it's likely going to, in my mind, and until we get more moves, it's probably going to slow back down a little bit. I mean, you hear stuff like something's killing the children. That skyrocketed in its holding, but I don't even think, have we gotten an official announcement like, hey, this specific production company, and this this is what's happening. I mean, I think it's all been rumored, right? So I don't know. What do you guys think is going to happen? Um. And what are you guys' thoughts on even the book in general? So I know a lot of people are loving it. I had I struggled with the artwork at times, but um, yeah. See, there's no actual news, so it's it's crazy to me what Mar and this is a conversation for sure. Like the market, um, you know, like let's see what the market's doing, right? Because it's like okay, no news for something killing the children. But, you know, there's one issue that sounds like 70 to 100 bucks. Number one's several hundred. Uh, I mean, it's it's crazy. Now, I, I, the story is certainly good, but I don't think a book just blows up that big just because it's that good. You know what I mean? Because um, if it was just all about the story, then I think people would probably, I don't know, you know, read it digitally or stuff. But that is... It's it's you know, and I think I think people have been fan rumoring it up for sure that that pump and dump kind of deal. Um, but we'll see. I mean, what's up, Jeremy? Hope you're doing well. Um, oh, guys. So while we're here, um, there we go. Yeah, and see, people have been pumping it up that way. <laughs> you're right. They don't blow up like that, do they? They don't need to. They don't need to. Um, nah, I mean, yeah, but I can still go buy them off shelves. I know a place where I can go buy a couple copies right now. Um, yeah, yeah, they definitely are all into conspiracy theories. So this like surely is going to hit at a good time, uh, for sure. Um, but a couple of things, I mean, cause you know, we haven't had a chance to really do a big channel update. So, uh, let me tell you guys kind of what, what we got in the works. Okay. Um, I'm working on a 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, we have, I mean, tons of prizes coming in for you guys. We're working with uh, artists like Jeremy Bernal in the chat. Uh, we're working with bigger companies as well. Um, and we also just reached a deal with Scout Comics where we're going to be uh, now sponsored by them. Um, and we're going to be doing multiple giveaways a year with them on top of them providing some some stuff to you guys in our 10,000 subscriber giveaway. So I've been talking with the president over there, Jamie. 
uh, and he, him and his team have been wonderful to work with. And we're also going to have a promo code to give out to you guys here soon. Uh, I do have it right now. The members know what it is. But until I can put all my assets together and all of my graphics and, and put it out there, um, that's where the, where it's at for now. But we are putting together some awesome stuff for that 10K giveaway. Like I said, Scout Comics, Mad Cave Comics, um, companies like Gator Guard, uh, BCW, these artists. Man, I got this Doyle comic art uh, sent over this beautiful, beautiful um, painting of Venom. So that's going to go to you guys. And we, we hope you guys enjoy that kind of stuff. So uh, super pumped about that. I'm trying to think if we have any other big news to talk about. Uh, Donnie, who, CJ, so what do you guys think about the art on Department of Truth? Yeah, it's tough, man. I, I crapped on it at the beginning of it. And everybody kind of jumped on me. And they're like, no, it is so good. It makes sense because it's conspiracy stuff. I'm like, all right, whatever. My bad. Um, but so let's talk about some of the reviews then until my guys get in here. Oh, hold on. No problem. What's going on, Remy Q? What's happening, my friend? Um, what's happening? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? No. It's not in here. Okay. It's gone. Oh, well. We're going to our review segment now. I'm sorry, guys. This new thing is not showing me all my stuff that I have uploaded. But anyway, so let's talk about some of the books that I've been reading. Firepower number eight. Uh, let me know, guys, what you think about this if you are picking it up. Man, I – this was a little little struggle for me, I'll be honest with you guys. Um, started off phenomenal with that prelude, and I've kind of been up here with it, and I'm starting to slowly come down because nothing else has happened. Like we're just sitting in people's houses for the last couple of issues. It's going – far too slow for me um so if this thing doesn't pick up pretty quickly uh i may end up dropping this pretty soon because i mean i might give it one or two more issues so uh we shall see um but anyways guys before we jump into all the reviews we do have our one of our guest hosts for the night just joined us in the back you guys want an argument so i thought who else could i bring on here that would argue with me in a similar fashion that maybe maybe I could get a rise out of him like I do with Dustin. And I picked the one topic that if you guys watch any of his channels, uh, any of his videos, when I super chat and mess with him, you guys know who it is. So we're going to bring on Burke Family. Steve. Steve from Burke Family 54 Comics. I bet you the first words he says, watch it. It's more fun. Time. time. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it, man. How's it it's, going? It's going well. How are you doing, Nick? Man, I'm hanging in there. I am. I'm. It's. It's. I'm hanging in there, man. It's been a long week. We've had. Everybody's had the snow and stuff. We've been dealing with and. Yep. But I am. I'm glad to be getting back to normal. Getting back to the live streams, all of that stuff. So. I was saying um, you've been gone for a while now, right? I really just uh um two days. Well, two two weeks, I guess. I mean, I'm not really been gone. I just haven't been on two streams. Uh, I was gone. <laughs> The week before Valentine's Day and then the week of Valentine's Day, we didn't do one because of, uh, obviously, Valentine's Day. So um, this is really the first week back. And then Dustin's gone and Justin has some things he's taken care of. So everybody gets to deal with me. Uh, I'm wearing sleeves today, Comic-Con, because it's cold. And also, my team, K-State, won for the very first time <laughs> In a basketball game since uh, December 29th. So we've been pretty bad at basketball this year, but we won today. So <laughs> Didn't the Chiefs get beat up somewhere in football lately? I don't want to talk about it. And I'm not saying that in a way of like trying to start something. Because I'll be honest with you. Like I played football through high school and like I was diehard into football in college and NFL. Yep. And like as I became, like grew older, I realized like, yeah, I got more important things than the stress about if Florida State's going to sure. win or lose. Because they're just they they're either really great or they're the worst team ever. There's no in between for them. So I just kind of got out of it completely. Um, but did they make it to the to the Super Bowl this year, or did they just get beat? Uh, Chiefs made it to the Super Bowl for the second straight year. 
Uh, and they did lose to Tom Brady and the Buccaneers in the Super Bowl. Pretty mm-hmm. badly, honestly, though Patrick Mahomes played pretty well, all things considering the offensive line wasn't blocking anyone. But that was like the number one ranked defensive line in the NFL, and the Chiefs were without four offensive linemen. So. Okay, so, so I genuinely, uh, Austin, I haven't watched a, a, a show of a show, see, a game of the NFL football or college probably since 2014, 2015. Um, and I didn't even know like Tom Brady tr- was traded. I heard that after he won that, oh, the Buccaneers won the Super Bowl. And I thought that Jameis Winston was still down there because, you know, he was the, the quarterback that won for yeah. Florida State. Yep. I didn't know he had been traded. I didn't know Tom Brady was down there. And I'm he like, didn't get, he didn't get traded. He got cut and then he got signed by the Saints. Oh, Jameis did? Mm-hmm. Oh, King Crab Legs done got cut. That's crazy to me. Man. I mean, I think he's a good good quarterback still. Yeah, he's probably just – he's got a bad uh, attitude and stuff for sure. But what happened to Tom? I mean, who's dumb enough to let go of Tom Brady? Uh, I New England Patriots, I don't know. I Honestly, though, like uh, – this is getting a little off topic. I will say that if you look at Tom Brady's uh, Super Bowl wins, yeah. I want to say like I think seven out of his ten – or six out of the ten Super Bowls he's went to, he had a top ten defense. And when mm. he finally didn't have a top ten defense uh, last year, they weren't very good. And people are saying that's the reason why he left. So did he choose to leave, or did the the, the he did choose? I mean, he was going to be a free agent, so he left. Dang. Well, good for him. Come up here real quick and show him what you're reading. Uh oh. That's cool. It's no Flash comic book. It's no Barry Flash. Allen. It's the end of the comic book. <laughs> She's been watch- she- okay, so we watched uh, Flora and Ulysses. Yes, I was going to talk about that tonight. Oh my gosh, that movie is excellent. Yeah, absolutely excellent. Okay, it goes. No, you cannot have any more of my comic books. This this one's already over. Okay, well, we- ask for Flash one ten. No, no, I don't have a Flash 110. Oh. I have a Flash 139. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Um, oh, man. So, uh, oh, and for anybody else that has a kid, so this was a topic you and I can talk about it because you do have a, a little girl too. I think that is an excellent movie for anybody with a young girl or or a um, uh, a son or daughter that they want to get into comic books or just expose them to it a little bit. Uh, Laura and Ulysses is on Disney Plus, a wonderful movie. Uh, the intro in it was just fantastic. I put it on and tried to get my 19 month old to watch it. There wasn't enough singing and dancing. But it's really I, good. I enjoyed it. It's yeah. really, really, really good. Give me one second because she's trying to watch it again. Okay, you're good. I'll, I'll, I'll put you backstage. All right. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe we'll do some of those for, uh, um, Members, maybe we'll do some training videos just for members, and then you guys can like share them out as unlisted. Um, but all right, so check that out. Uh, and then there was a couple other okay, so Orcs, um, because there's a couple books I was going to talk with with Steve about. So Orcs Man was a good book, it's by Kaboom, it's got this really, really cool art style to it. So let me know if you see, um, any of uh. Uh, if you've read this at all, but I just thought it was kind of the neatest little book. Um, I don't remember like it being like a teen book or anything. So I think it'd be safe to let a kid read it. Um, and if there was some stuff I missed, then maybe I'm just too desensitized to stuff. Uh, so I'm not taking ownership for that, but this was, I enjoyed it. It's just a neat little story. So maybe check that out. Um, cause kaboom is uh, a pretty neat little publisher there. Um, and then, what did you guys? What have you guys been thinking? I know this is an issue. There's issue too. High Republic. I'm probably going to drop this thing. I mean, it it doesn't. I'm struggling with it, guys. I mean, what has been y'all's response to it? What has been y'all's thoughts to it? Um, nope, he's back. There we go. You're st- I'm back. All right, cool. It was buffering. <laughs> hey, Nick. Uh, who owned DOJ? Uh, department. Uh, oh, maybe not. Yeah, clarify what you mean by DOJ. 
I'm assuming we're going to talk about this tonight, right? What? Yeah, so I've already been talking about it a little bit, and I, I let everybody know. Um, and it, Yeah, definitely give me your thoughts on it. But so I, I got a copy of uh, obviously one of the variants, and then at the end of the night tonight, anybody that super chats $1.99 or more, put them in a drawing, and then I'll send out a box of comics to those guys with one of these issues in it just as nice. kind of a way to give back to people. Um, but um, but – but yeah, so uh, kaboom! It may be for preteens. I don't know. I was just. Do you know if this is preteen specifically? I don't know anything about orcs. I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah, I, okay. I've heard it. I've heard of it before, but I I would think it's probably a preteen book. Yeah, I don't know. I just picked it up because I like weird stuff like that. Um, that book. See that book. What book? Um. Let's see. Um. I don't know, but hold on. So which which book, Superhero? He said DOJ, that book. Uh, oh, who owns that book? Maybe that's what he said. Who, own, who, who owns the book? Is that what you're saying? Orcs or that one? Let me know. Let me know. Okay, so I have number one of that book. I have the Stephanie Hahn, Yoda yeah. variant, and I did not read it. I, I bought a regular one too, but I put it in a Burke box. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people are kind of just buying it to spec on it. The only reason I didn't uh, read it is because I don't want to mess up one copy I have. And also, like, I don't know. I, I felt like if I read it, I would get into it. And, like, the last thing I need right now is another series that I'm going to be picking up every single week at the comic book store. Like, because this past week, for me, it was a big week. I picked up, like, seven or eight books. And I just don't want to keep spending a ton on new books when I want to. This year, I'm going to try to buy more keys. And I know that's what Dustin's been doing a lot of yeah. lately. So I've been trying to do more of that and less new comics. So that's yeah, what I think. Yeah, and I think a lot of people um, are doing that. And I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, I mean, there are so many new I mean, like I literally have two stacks, three stacks of books over here. Some of them are read, some of them I haven't. Um, and that's what's frustrating is you spend money and then you don't end up sometimes reading them. Um so, you know, and I've read, like I said, a lot of these, but like, you know, I've got, what was one of the, the big books that like, like once in future, I bet you I have seven issues of once in future. I've been picking up in Savage Avengers. Yeah. I haven't been reading them. Um, so I think I, you know, most people, a lot of people are, um, and I've also been really focusing on not so much purchasing keys and stuff, but for me going back and reading some old stories or some old indie titles, and that's really what I've been focusing on doing, buying some of the compendiums and collected issues uh, or editions and, uh, and heck, even buying them digitally uh, so I can go back and, um, you know, really, really get caught up on that. So I did um, talk about um, Firepower, and I will say this, that is a book that I will read until it's no you think longer. so? Oh, dude, it's so good. It is a slow burn, but I like it. It's, I think the reason I like it so much is because of that OGN. If I had not read the OGN, yeah. I think I'd probably be out by now. So, and that's what I was talking about right before you jumped on was firepower. It might have been right as you were jumping on. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm probably going to give it just a few few more issues, and I'm um, probably going to dump it if something else big doesn't happen, man. I mean, I was couldn't have been a bigger fan of it whenever the oversized, like you said, the OGN, the oversized graphic novel came out through that prelude. That by itself. You put that out in a hardcover, I'm buying it again anyways. You know what I mean? It was oh, such totally. a good story. But I'm tired of sitting in this town and them running around from a little bit of house to house every other issue. You know, like nothing else big has happened in what, sure. maybe six issues? Um, and I need something. You know what I mean? Um, and I feel like, okay, I'm reading Walking Dead. I'm, I read Invincible. I, I understand Robert Kirkman's writing style, I think, at this point. But this seems so much slower than any of those books, right? Because like in Invincible by issue 10 or 11, I mean, we were getting some huge reveals already. Walking Dead, same thing. I mean, um, so like nothing really big has happened since like issue one or two when the old man came back. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on, I know you said it's a slow burn, but I mean, what do you think? I think it has a chance for a TV show, honestly. Mm -hmm. it's It's like... What's the what? What's the right way I'm looking? Right, what I'm looking for. I I, I think it's kind of like an Iron Fist, yeah. But more fun and relatable for us dads, for sure. Yeah. Like, you know, 
it, and it kind of has like a little Batman Begins feel to it too. You know, yeah. you go to the train at this place in the mountains and all of that stuff. Um, I don't know. I, I just I just think it's really really good. It it, it has been a slow burn for the last couple um, issues, mm-hmm. but I, I still th- I get a happy feeling every time I read it. I don't necessarily yeah. get the same feeling when I read. I only read issues <laughs> one and two, and I was like, I, I feel, yeah, I didn't like the way I felt after reading it. But I, I still think it's good, and it definitely has a chance to be obviously if it was purchased for TV and movies to be something that's everyone's gonna like, especially considering it's conspiracy theories. But yeah, I and I think Department of Truth would be an awesome, awesome HBO Max series, like a really yeah. gritty, almost like a True Detectives. Do you remember? Did you watch that show? True Detective season one is one of the best yeah. individual seasons of any show all time. So something similar to that feel for me, I think would be, uh, and obviously with its own spin and stuff, but like, I think that would be cool. Um, I think that kind of that dark. Yeah. But you're right though, man. When I read stuff, when I read comic books, I want to feel happy about afterwards. I want to feel like, and I, I enjoy the emotion behind it, but right. I don't want to feel like, like bad. You know what I mean? That's so I'm I right there with you too. When they were talking about, babies and what they're all that stuff i did yeah. not like that at all <laughs> I, got right out. I got grossed out and i was like ah i feel gross i can't read this anymore so <laughs> I, I never liked the art in it to begin with so once yeah. the story went off the deep end i was like okay can't do this anymore but <laughs> i knew at some point it had some it had a chance to be a book that got picked up and it did obviously yep. and you yep. were doing a giveaway tonight yeah, so and, and uh, I believe uh, I just saw. And again, guys, forgive me. We're using this new streaming app. Um, it's it's through Streamlabs, but um, the the chat function of it isn't as great. But we are streaming in 1080p for literally a third of what Streamyard charges. So uh, I'm going to try it out and try to give some feedback while they're still in development. But I think you saw about yeah Department of Truth. So he said, "Who owns it?" Well, Image Comics is the publisher. Sisters. And and that that's the name of the the uh, I guess it's the production company, right? Um, they won the bidding war on it, and they have a relationship with places like HBO and some other things. But they have not actually announced if it's going to go to HBO or, or if it's actually going to be a show or if it's actually going to be a movie. I know they're they're they haven't even finished a script. They're still looking for a co writer, so it could change yeah. a thousand times from here now. Uh, but what is cool though is normally when these things are sold off, the writer has nothing to do with it from that point forward, but he's actually going to be a writer on it and an executive producer. So will the artist. Uh, and that's something we don't see often. I know that a lot of comic book writers, like they are like, they obviously like comic books and like writing them, but yeah, I feel like most comic book writers really their jam is movies and they want yeah. movies or TV shows. Yeah. Like that's, that is um, Kyle Higgins thing. That's what yeah. he wants to do. That's what he wants to do. That's what Ryan Parrott wants to do. He just got uh, – he's a Power Rangers writer for anyone that didn't know. He just got a, a movie script on like the blacklist or something. Yeah. Yeah, for real, right? And uh, same thing with James Tynan. Like it seems like yeah. – obviously he loves comic books. He's writing Batman. And he's killing yeah. Department of Truth. Something's killing children. All of that. But obviously he's going to be, be a part of the movie or TV yeah. uh, portion of it. And I think that's what he really wants to do. Yeah. So. So, Ted, I was a big fan of Undiscovered Country at first whenever it came out, but after, like, issue six or seven, I ended up dropping it, man. There was, or, there was just so much going on and just not enough to really, you know, pull me into it. But um, real quick, got one more of our guest host on for the night uh, and uh, would love to bring him on now, Mr. Josh Ala from Haven Comics. How you doing, sir? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Man, I'm living the dream. Living the Does dream. Does that mean you're doing a show without your brother? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So for you guys, first time seeing Josh, um, he is my local comic shop owner. Uh, you know, honestly, one of the reasons I continued to collect comic books after I purchased um, uh, the Infinity Gauntlet 1 through 6. So because there for a minute I was going to a separate comic shop and those guys were teetotal a-holes. And just made you feel bad every time you went into a shop. And then, you know, I went back to Josh's and 
totally different ballpark. So, but he does a comic book YouTube channel as well as Facebook. It is Haven Comics. Both Burke and Josh are uh, Josh's channel and link in the description below. So check those folks out. Um, and Josh runs a game show every Thursday night where he gives away like way more than I ever probably <laughs> would in one night. And we've given away some stuff, uh, but it's actually quite fun. So Dustin, jo- jo- Dustin and I have both been on and we're supposed to be doing a part two to that or part three to that at some point. Right. Yeah. We're going to try and get Justin on too, whenever we, his schedule can uh, work mm-hmm. with it. So um, that'll be good. And I got to say you and your brother both tied. Did we? We both equally suck. You both, you both got the same number of questions. Correct. Right on. <laughs> Which was like what two? <laughs> it was four. Four. Hey, I'm good with that. I did a lot better than I expected. So, um, but man, it's been a long time since we had you on on here. So we're glad to have you back, J- uh, Josh. I don't know if you and Steve have ever met, but Josh, he this is Steve. Steve, this is Josh. Um, Steve is is the Power Rangers man and loves all things Kansas City, right? Yeah, so basically. The, yeah. So Kansas. the Super Bowl was as painful for you as it was for me then. Yes, it was. It was God, cool. that sucked. It did suck. Yes. It, it, yeah, I'm a Royals fan, Chiefs fan. Big Kansas State Wildcats fan, obviously. And I know Josh. I've seen him many times. It's, okay. it's actually this, not oh, this. Sorry. I don't WC, know. WC, which I'm actually going to stop doing because some dude commented. It, it's a long story, but oh. I'm going to stop putting the hand signal because he confused it with something else. Anyways, I've seen Josh uh, on here a lot of times, and yeah. I know you guys did that uh, live stream at his shop that one time when I was hanging out with you guys. So that was really cool. I, you have a really nice shop. If I ever go down there, I would love to visit it for sure. I uh, appreciate that. Yeah, we. it's a smaller store footprint-wise. It's uh, it's not real big, but it's a lot of fun. We enjoy it. Uh, had a guy come in today. It, this still happens, and this baffles me. Uh, we're, we will have been in business as of April 2nd for 20 years. That's awesome. And the uh, guy walks in today, and this happens three times a week. Hey, man, how long have you guys been here? Wow. Well, um, 20 years? <laughs> Oh, huh. I drive by here all the time. I never saw you. <laughs> it's that new uh, sign you got out front. They're not even looking for it. That new sign does make a big difference. That's for sure. Uh, the, the landlord uh, had an old dilapidated marquee up, yeah. and uh, they put a brand new one up. I mean, she, she spent a lot of money on it. Uh, putting that big electronic signage up there cost, what, uh, 40000 bucks. It was extreme. But uh, it has driven a lot of business in. So it was, yep. as somebody who didn't have to pay for it, good investment. <laughs> That's right. And what's up, Uncle Rod? Hope you're doing well, man. Hope you're doing well. Um, all right. Let's see. Where's Did Dustin? we already cover uh, a read of the week and favorite? No, we've not such? yet. I've kind of been, I've, I've been delaying most of that until you guys got on so we could run through those real quick. Um, and then Josh. Burke is a huge Wally West fan. Okay. Huge. Huge. Like you. That's okay. That's okay. One of my best friends is a Wally West fan. And uh, what I do is I just try not to hold it against him. <laughs> so that's awesome. Because everybody's like, oh, we want the argument. But if Dustin's not on, there's nobody for me to argue with. So I was like, well, let me reach out to Burke. He was the first person I thought of. And I'm like, let's have this discussion finally. It's been a year, year long coming. And let's see if I can get him as as rattled up as I get Dustin. And before we ever do it at the end of the night, no, there's no hard feelings. No. And I actually don't care one way or another, but I, I genuinely think <laughs> I have a good argument. Okay. All so right. you read, So I'm, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be fun. Um, what's up, Nick, the comic nerd? Um, yeah, where the heck is the chat with this new, uh, this new thing? There. I don't even know what it looks like on y'all's side. So I just, you, you just have to hit a button to say you show the chat. That's all. Okay. It's not automatic. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, now, hang on. Josh Boyden, you say your your comic shop is Borderlands. Uh, would that be the one in uh, South Carolina? Because if so, that's a rocking store. Yep. Uh, and they put on a heck of a con every year. Yep. All right. So... Well, let, let's talk about it then real quick. So I know, what did I put in there? King and Black, Thor, and Last Ronin, right? Mm-hmm. All right. 
So do you guys want to talk about Thor first? I'm game. I'll be honest. I thought I read all my books this week. That is the only book I did not read, but I I know what's – obviously, I've read every, every single issue. Yeah. There. So you guys can spoil it, and I can kind of like glance through it as you guys are talking. And, well, and- I don't want to spoil it then for you, man, because no, it was no, an no, awesome no. book. It's fine. It's your channel. It's fine. I should have read it by now. It's been four days. So. No, it's good, man. And a lot of people at home maybe haven't had a chance to pick them up yet because of the snow and stuff. Um, but but what else – it's what fun. I'll tell you guys is I genuinely think Thor might be the best book on shelves right now. I, I enjoy it every single issue. For a minute there was Avengers until they started doing this weird Mortal Kombat thing. I'm not feeling with Phoenix. I got to admit, I'm enjoying it just because it feels so like an 80s take on a 60s book. It, it feels yeah. like a Silver Age book uh, because it's so out there. It's so weird. And you're getting these weird matchups of characters who should never fight each other in a million years, like Black Panther and yeah. and uh, Howard the Duck, right? I mean, that, yeah. that's a that's a fight that should never happen. Oh, it's hilarious, but like like I said, it's not a bad book. But I'm just saying, like comparing it up to what's happening here in Thor with Donald Blake, it's it's tough, man. It is tough for me. I think my issue with Thor right now is. There's no One of the things that uh, <laughs> Cates is known for, right? Cates will take something continuity-wise. He'll grab something out of the past. Uh, he'll throw a, a hand grenade in the room. It'll go off. It'll explode. And it's a fun read, and it's cool to watch. But he just leaves chaos in his wake. And you're like, what was that, man? Because yeah. well, what is another writer going to do? Uh, you just destroyed building blocks that they had to play with, and now they're gone. Yeah, yeah, Rob is the guy at Borderlands there in South Carolina, and those dudes are awesome. That is a one of the best comic book stores I have ever uh, interacted with. Very well. Now comes the pain. That's <laughs> from Throg. Yeah. That's pretty good. I, I pulled it out. I'm, I'm quickly glancing through it as you guys. All are. right. So, but yeah, Throg man, I was so pumped on the last issue when Throg showed up because I don't know much about him. I haven't read much about him, but I was like, oh yes, I'm finally going to get some Throg in my life. But then it felt like Josh, I don't again not to spoil it, but I felt like there was like from one one page to another, it was like, oh, things were going well, and then all of a sudden not. And I felt like we missed out on the good part. And I like I was disappointed. I'll be honest with you with that. It's like, okay, how do we go from we're punching through people's teeth to Right. Like, Imagine this smaller, yeah. but coming out my mouth that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like all of a sudden it it started winning. It start. It went the exact opposite of, um, for 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 Throck. But I'll tell you that scene at the end where he's like, "Run!" I'm like, "Oh snap!" And then the big reveal at the bar, um, and that's not a spoiler. I don't know, man. What? Do you, where is that with continuity wise, and like what's happened in the past? Oh, that's happened before. Um, that's what happened to Dustin. He don't look right. <laughs> <laughs> Very comic pro. Uh, yeah. Uh, Odin is, uh, I'm trying to think how to describe this. He's a bit of a flake. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's king of all things. He's the all father. He's this, he's that. Um, and occasionally he dies and occasionally he uh, has to do the Viking thing and go, uh, roused about and forget, you know, complete dereliction of duty. He has to leave yeah. the kingdom behind and, uh, I, I'm sure that he is in the doghouse every time he comes home. Yeah, uh, but this is that's nothing new. That's happened many times. It, yep. The big the big thing here is, you know, who he left things with and how things were going. And okay, yeah. Thor finally stepped up, and I'm the man, and I'm going to do it all. And now Thor is stuck uh, <laughs> uh, in a bad place, and bad yeah. things are happening, and it's not going to be pretty if the scenario goes down where Thor has to be rescued by uh, the big reveal. Uh, it's like, come on, man. Thor's got to figure this out on its own. Yeah. Yeah. So did you get through it all the way, Burke? I mean, I, I read the first couple pages and I just sort of glancing through. But yeah, yeah. I, I did see the ending there. Odin's at the bar and he goes, now it's time to clean up your mess. Yeah. Uh, and Thrall was battling um, Blake and he was doing pretty well. Um, Stephen Strange is in there, which is interesting, and he 
is wearing the same outfit that he wore in King of Black for at least one scene. Yep. Yep. So that's that make that kind of makes sense as Donny Cates is writing both. I uh, gotta say, uh, King in Black, uh, for the buildup that that had to the character that that pulled out of its butt, I'm like, there is no way in God's green earth that that was the answer to that question. That yeah, that was a huge letdown for me too. I think that was let down for a lot of people, and I, I believe Newbie Comics actually brought it out first, and that became a big deal. But yeah, um, spoiler alert, and I'll wait like five seconds before I say anything else. But the the reveal, and I know we kind of jumped real quick from Thor to King and Black, but yeah, I was I was totally let down. You know, I'm sorry. I just realized that I'm supposed to be Justin Birch for tonight. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, crazy hair. <laughs> um, so yeah. All right, here comes the spoilers. If you haven't read King Black 4, hold your ears. Captain Universe. What? That's our God of Light? I mean, wh- what? We couldn't have come up. I mean, not only you... is Captain Universe our God of Light, but he's a symbiote now. He's a like a reverse symbiote. And then he chooses to be the host of his power. Eddie Brock? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Not just Eddie Brock, a dead Eddie Brock. Dead Eddie, <laughs> right. yeah. I was this close to being happy if he actually pulled back and resuscitated Sentry and got rid of the void and you could have this like kind of pure Sentry. Yeah. Uh, I, I was half interested in where that might go. But yeah. when he like zooms in, oh, and no, let's go into the hospital. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh. Yeah, I was not pleased. Yeah. No, I thought it was... At that point, I immediately lost all interest in in this entire arc. I mean, issue five is going to have to have some something something crazy. But I felt like we're not getting a big a big return on Silver Surfer Black. He just showed up to let in a light ball. Okay, great. Well, he's right. there. Right he's there. Now. And I'm I, a- I can I yeah. can get in. Oh, oh hi. Oh, oh, you didn't want me. Oh, okay. Well, please go this way. Oh, he used it. He did use it. I, I know, but it's just like I felt like, man, you gave this guy his own series and this right. awesome origin, and then like his only purpose has been to let in a ball of light that's an anti-venom Captain Planet universe, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, I don't know, but I think we can all mutually agree, like it, it was a letdown. It was a huge letdown. Everything else has been. Felt like it was building up, and everything Donny Cates has been doing has been really good. That was a letdown. Was it a let- was like he's been pitching fastballs this whole time, and every one of them has been a strike right across the plate, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, exactly. And then he throws this curveball because he feels a need to change it up, and it just goes, whoo. Nope. Come on, Donny. Do what you do best. Create chaos and just don't use freaking Captain Universe as your god of light. I mean, it could have been anybody cooler. Anything. You know, I don't Captain know. Universe was a weird one, and to have uh, Reed Richards all like, "Wait a minute, we've just been calling it the wrong thing." Like, yeah, yeah, that's I would I get the impulse to want to call that something other than Captain Universe because that's a stupid name. <laughs> it is. I mean, like I'm bigger than Captain America. I'm bigger than Captain World. I'm definitely bigger than Captain Planet. I'm Captain Universe. <laughs> I go, come on, man. Oh man. But I don't know. I mean, Absolute Carnage was kind of a letdown last year too because you really never got a good payoff or any of it. And this year, I've not purchased any of the tie-ins because of that same reason. Uh oh. No. Never purchased the tie-ins. Uh, yep. Eleven times out of ten, they're going to be bad. And that's coming from a comic shop owner. It's like, no, please buy them all. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I, as a comic shop owner, despise those tie-ins because what we get is I want all the tie-ins. Do you know how many there are? Yeah. No, but I want them all. And then after the first one, maybe the second, people are like, why are all these books showing up in my box? You specifically yep. requested all the tie-ins. Uh, and so then we've got stuff we ordered two months ago that nobody wants. Yeah, uh, that's tough. 
it's, and that's uh, why like even if there is something where i'm like i'll pull off my pull list i'll, I'll still buy it until like your, your pre-orders are done i tell you guys at the counter all the time i'm like hey can you pull this off and they go to pull it out of my box i'm like no 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 i i want it you know i asked for it so i'm gonna pay for it because that's what you do as an honest person but just none of the other ones going forward because it kind of sucks. <laughs> it, it is no longer what I wanted. Yeah. So, yeah. so Josh, you may be able to answer this better than I can about Conan. Uh, is he from a forgotten time period? No one cares about. Uh, yes and no. Um, it's not really a time period. It's a uh, alternate version of medieval Europe, uh, Hyboria. Uh, so the time period is really just a medieval time period, but it's an alternate world kind of yeah. thing. It's very close. Uh, and a lot of the names are very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's it, it could take place in our world, but doesn't quite. Uh, hence the magic and some of those kinds of things. But uh, no, it's not the Hyborian age. Oh, no. You'll see a lot of people call it. But yeah, no, it's it's not exactly what it is. Okay. And again, that was definitely a better question for you than me. All right, Chris. Well, that's right. <laughs> Between Chris, Tosh, and Nosh, or not Nosh, Tosh, 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 there's too many Oshes. Between Chris, Tosh, and the other Josh, Dewey J Day Trader. Yeah, we're going to have to. <laughs> you guys are killing me. Um, oh, boy. But, but all that to say, I hope King and Black 5 pays off. 30 venom 33 venom the last few years of venom has been a letdown for me too i this weird uh basically venom 33 ended he's now found where basically like the, what what would you call it like this the space between heaven and hell what is that called again purgatory purgatory uh, type thing for symbiotes and now null has him it's but then he just like a hive or something right yeah yeah it's like the hive yeah. type deal and now Noel is in there with him, but now Eddie Brock's body is now Captain Universe thing. So that would call him. Out probably in the next Venom book. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking is like, okay, how is that going to overlap? And and I tell you what, one, final thing on the Venom King and Black stuff, I really wish like Dylan would have actually been the answer to everything and Dylan just showed up and destroyed everybody and been done with it. <laughs> Even though it's predictable, I get it. But that's what we wanted, man. That's what you built up. Why, why was it? Mm. That's him trying to be too clever and throwing himself a curveball when he could have just kept throwing him straight down the gut. And uh, yeah. I, I, I thought he dropped the ball there because instead he's got a love affair with Eddie Brock. Clearly, I mean he keeps wanting to go back to that well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think he let his personal feeling for that character override where the story wanted to go. Yeah. That's how I feel about crossover. Oh my god, I one hundred percent agree with that. I haven't it's, even read since issue one. Oh my god, dude, I'm not sure it's worth it. Such a letdown. I was so mad. It's like, do I even pick up issue four next week? Well, oh. of course, because you already have it on your pool, don't you? Uh, I think I do. I mean, I, actually, I don't know if I do or not. If I do, <laughs> I'll obviously pay for it. But like, man, I'll tell you what. It's well, issue three was such a letdown after Donnie built it up. Well, it's like in Wandavision. Oh, this aerospace engineer, and then nothing happened. <laughs> now, in all fairness, with WandaVision, um, that was just a red herring. Oh, that sure. was not like a major plot point. That was just something people in the audience latched onto. Like, my yeah. God, is it a thing I really want it to be? Within seconds, it's all over Twitter. I hate Twitter, by the way. It's a cesspool for spoilers. Was, and was that yesterday's episode. Yeah. So I want to disagree with Taj there. I think WandaVision has been spectacular. It started with this very slow burn, like you're in the water very and sweet. it's nice and, and lukewarm. And then they turn it up just a notch and they, they start dropping little hints and it gets a little warmer and a little warmer. By the time you hit episode four, it's starting to get pretty toasty. Uh, at episode seven that just oh, released yesterday, boy, that water is boiling and it is spectacular. The ending, the last 10 minutes, incredible. Yeah. Now, quick so, question. Did you stick around through the credits this time? Yeah. Because most of the time there's nothing there, right? Uh, but this time there was a scene mid-credits. Yeah. Um, so what were you oh, – real quick, uh, Burke, what were you going to say about um, Twitter or something like that? 
I don't know. I said something about one division and Twitter being a oh, yeah, so there was like, like aerospace engineer or something. So you guys was everyone assuming that was Fantastic Four? Everybody yeah. thought that was gonna be Reed Richards. Did yeah. they say that in this past episode? No. What episode? No. That say? was in six and they thought it was gonna happen in seven and nothing happened. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well they just I mean, didn't they just like there was just a rumor today about um Sue Storm being cast, right? Yeah. Oh, that uh, was all baloney, man. That that that's somebody trying to make a thing happen, because uh, they're talking to Jennifer Lawrence, who is uh, she's got more range than most people give her credit for, but she's yeah. not the right person to play Sue Storm. I'm sorry. They you need know. to get, in my opinion, John Krasinski and his wife Emily Blunt. <laughs> I 100 percent agree with that. Uh, they they can absolutely pull that off. Mm-hmm. Uh, <sighs> I, here's a question, and because I, I know you were watching the Super Bowl, Burke. Uh, you saw the commercial for the inspiration thing there, right? Which one? Do you remember it? I don't, I don't remember if I – if you explain it's, it for some time. It's this all-civilian space uh, – first all-civilian space flight okay. uh, thing. And it's called Inspiration. The 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 end of the commercial kind of ends with this poster-looking look view – of a spaceship taking off and it's got the cloud of smoke and everything from the bottom and it's spreading out. And you've got these four silhouettes of astronauts. And in the middle of the O at the end of inspiration is the number four. Really? I did not see that. Now, Elon Musk, this is running as yeah, Google this. This is running as an Elon Musk thing. But of course, Elon Musk is a total nerd, loves comics and also was in what, uh, Iron Man 2. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and I've seen a couple of things since then. Right. And dude. the use of that four in that logo, four astronauts, uh, private citizen, first space flight kind of deal, I, that, that reeks of Fantastic Four to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think I'd be a little disappointed if it was revealed in WandaVision, though. I feel like they need something. They, they deserve bigger... I mean, I think it's a WandaVision is a great place for that reveal. WandaVision has given itself the ability to set up anything they want. Yeah. Well, I will say this that whenever the Fantastic Four does join MCU, it's going to be amazing because I feel like the previous iterations have not been good. Like, oh, they've been maybe, awful. Like the, the first iteration may be okay. But like overall, compared to what the what Marvel can do now, and how much people are into comic book movies now, and the hype behind the Fantastic Four, I feel like it'll explode. Okay. Yeah. It'll well, go. I tell you what, I think Kevin Feige will understand that Fox never got, Fox never understood, was that the Fantastic Four are not superheroes. They are not, let's strap into this costume and go beat up a bad guy. That happens sometimes, but they're a family first. But they're a family of adventurers and explorers. They are investigating science and the mysteries of the universe. Uh, The best Fantastic Four stories are, let's, like, the negative zone, right? Let's dig into that. Let's get into some Annihilus. It's them discovering things like uh, Galactus and Silver Surfer, all this kind of stuff. It's them exploring the universe, and things happen, and they deal with it. But if you just treat them like Daredevil or Spider-Man, you're doing a huge disservice to them, and they don't work very well in that in yeah. that uh, in that environment. And I think Kevin Feige knows that, and I think Kevin Feige is going to use them the right way. Yep. And Kevin Feige, we trust, and John Favreau, we believe, and Dave well, Filoni's the effing man. So yep. don't forget that, Taika Waititi in there. Yeah. Yeah. I was just throwing in some Star Wars shots. He was doing Star Wars too, dude. Was he? Well, he did do some. He was IG eleven, and he also directed several of those episodes in season. That's right. That's right. So, he is my favorite character from Thor. Piss off, Ghost. (laughs) I love that stupid guy. All right, Thor four will be great. (laughs) Um, I I hope so, man. We put up pamphlets. So I got to ask, because I, I know, Rick, uh, Nick, rather, you are uh, fresher to the hobby. 
and you're not going to have the nostalgia factor that I certainly had. Um, did you read this? I have not yet. I have it right here, but I have not read it yet. Have you read this, Burke? No. You look like a very young guy, um, and that maybe looks deceiving. I don't know. How old are you? Are you were you around in the early 90s when this stuff was hitting? So I didn't collect comic books until about five years ago. Okay. Uh, my, I used to go to the comic book store or like look at them at the grocery store, but I never like bought any. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. So well, I got to tell y'all, this right here, it's written by Fabian Nicieza, co-creator of Deadpool. He wrote New Warriors back in the day. He wrote New Mutants back in the day. He wrote the X-Men <clears throat> with art by Brett Booth, who was an early... He was one of the first generation of people after the creators of Image to come into Image and, and do comics over there. So he's got that early 90s art style down pat, yeah. right? This book is set in that 90s continuity, and they tell you right up front which issue yep. number this takes place after this. Yep. This right here, for anybody who was around, anybody who read the books and loved the 90s X-Men, we're talking Extinction Agenda, uh, we're yeah. talking uh, Age of Apocalypse, all that stuff. Boy, is that a fun book. Yeah. I wonder it no, looks no, and this. reads just like I, I've jumped in a time machine and went back 30 years. Well, let me ask you this because, I mean, obviously what Hickman's doing with X-Men is kind of crazy. And, and I think a lot of people who read the, we'll say, the more classic X-Men stories probably aren't reading it or really a fan, to be honest with you, from the conversations I've had. Do you yeah. think Marvel's doing stuff like this to try to recapture that audience? Uh, I think that's probably a part of it because what Hickman did with House of X and Powers of X was brilliant. Yeah. Uh, because what it did was it gave them the ability to uh, call everything that has ever happened in the X books continuity. It all is real. It all happened. Yep. But it also made it so they weren't bound to any of it. They didn't have to stick to it. Yeah. Uh, it, it literally anything could happen. Uh, and Hickman is known for playing the long game. That's one of his strengths as a storyteller. Uh, the problem is he. It's like uh, when you're playing golf, right? You can hit the the drives great, but if your short game's not very good, you're in trouble. Yeah. And Hickman, I think he he's got a great drive off the tee. I think he's got a good putt, but his short game in between, he just it takes him so long to weave those threads together that people get lost and they get tired of it. And I kind of feel that that's what's happened here. Plus Marvel decided to Marvel and uh, just absolutely saturate the market with too many X books. Freaking right X out of the gate too. Marauders. They didn't give anybody any time to breathe. Uh, so I think throwing this back uh, and cause now this story set during this continuity, it's still fair play in the current continuity. Yeah. It doesn't wreck anything. But boy, it sure does uh, scratch that itch for a 90s X-Men book that looks and feels like a 90s X-Men book. I got to tell you, that for me was one of the most fun reads I've had in the past couple of months. It was great. That's good. That's what it's about. So maybe maybe I need to go read some X-Men then. Some I thought 90s. Of X was good. Powers of 10 were, it was okay. I, I had to jump off all the X-Men titles, man, when they started getting weird with X-Force and like just all this. Look at that close-up. Talk about a close-up. Um, but yeah, it's so Mountain Peaks. Josh, give them a quick summary about what that was. Yeah, X-Men Legends is a new X-Men book. Uh, it's written by Fabian Nicieza, 90s X-Men writer extraordinaire, art by Brett Booth. 90s artist for Image. He did the Blacklash comic book over at Image. It was the thing I really most associate him with. Uh, but yeah, it's absolutely, if you're a 90s X-Men fan uh, from that time period, this is set right in the middle of that. Uh, and I got to tell you, Nick, if you've not ever read any of it, pick up the Extinction Agenda. Okay. Uh, Jim Lee uh, was doing the art on that. That was phenomenal. Okay. Well, because right now, massacre. I mean, X Men. Uh, X Men just had a ton of great stories during the early '90s and mid '90s. Well, because you know, right now I'm reading Fables, and I told you it's been a bit of a struggle for me because it is so different than where I was with Invincible. But I'm on about issue thirty now, so it, I, I'm getting there, right? Um, but I'm gonna. I'm. I'm still not decided if I'm gonna try to finish it off and 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 get, go through it. 
or if I need to do like we talked about, kind of like a palate cleanser, I'm thinking maybe I might try to read through Spawn because I feel like that would be a really quick read. Um, you know, it's just like, okay, punch in the face story, punch in the face, you know, like there's probably not a lot of depth to it like it is with like Fables has a pretty depth the depthy in-depth story i guess is what i'm trying to say well, fables has a huge cast of characters yeah. for one uh and then it's got a you're about 30 issues in you said yeah um so you're getting into like the adversary and figuring all that stuff out right yeah um what up bo they don't take too long from where you are to get to the identity of the adversary and okay. start to really go down that rabbit hole uh, and some of the characters who have been around from day one undergo some, and they've been minor little characters. Uh, they undergo some pretty impressive changes and become really yeah. interesting, big characters further in. So you think uh, I'm getting right there on the verge of like, it's going to hook me for sure. I don't know if it'll hook you or not uh, that way, but it's, uh, it's building up to a really good, uh, the first big wave of the story. There is a peak with the identi- identity of the adversary and then the mm-hmm. story of how they deal with it. And then it kind of ramps back up to another story. Because I really thought the adversary was going to be the run of the whole book. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't. It was just the, oh, first, really? the first wave. Yeah. Okay. So that, that was definitely something I wasn't expecting either. Um, but I've heard nothing but really positive things about how this ends up. So that's why I want to push through it. Um, but I'm thinking next month. I was gonna, I think, do Why the Last Man, but Such I'm almost, a good book. I'm, th- I'm tempted to change to Spawn with this new announcement, and try to get through that because that compendium's coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that maybe what I end up doing, or maybe you just can read, read more Donny Cates when he starts writing Spawn, and you'll be like, "This is really awesome. This is really awesome. What happened?" Yeah. So and and honestly, I've read a couple of you know like the first six or seven issues of Spawn, and man, it was a pretty good story. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Can I ask a quick question of Burke? You said you're a, a Power Rangers guy, right? I am. He's he's just a small one, though. Huge. Just I have my own variant, too. My own Power Rangers variant. He's a bigger so, Power Rangers fan than Dustin is. I am. By like 10 well, There's different levels to it. But, yeah, I, I'm usually pretty positive always on Ranger books. Dustin doesn't share the same positivity as me. Dustin doesn't share the same positivity level with anybody on anything, so don't feel bad. Okay, that's true. That's true. So my question is, uh, I mean, I know Higgins wrote Radiant Black. Did you like Radiant Black? Have you read that? I read Radiant Black number one back in September. <laughs> so How yeah, did you I, pull that off? Okay, so I, I interviewed Kyle Higgins on another channel that did not end up getting posted, but – he sent us an advanced copy back before it was even announced, and I read it then. Um, so it's been a while since I read it. I did grab it. I, I think it's in my pile over here somewhere. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, it is very, very much like – oh, here it is right here. Um, it's like – it's to me, and, and talking with him and knowing where he's from and what stuff he's gone through in his life, it felt like to me like Kyle Higgins made himself a Power Ranger. <laughs> I haven't read it, but that sounds interesting. So it's a little bit of wish fulfillment there. I mean, like, okay, like, did you read Radio Black number one? I did. I'm not a Power Rangers guy, and not being a Power Rangers guy, I enjoyed it. I got people who come into the shop and they want to know about it. And so I tell them, look, uh, th- this is what I know. So you're telling me inf- interesting information, but we need to say goodnight to Nosh, man, because that dude's got to head out. He's got the early shift. That's right. He's got to go bust through some. <laughs> Man, if you have not seen the video he did, so we sent him something cool, and he posted this video, and he talked about his job as a bus driver and just how crazy it is. Um, and I watched that video, I swear to God, four times just listening to his story. But he he's awesome, man. We love Nosh on this channel. He he is between him and Kenneth Burke, and um, uh, obviously, um, well, Ruben. I kept wanting to call him Guzman, but I couldn't remember his first name for that reason. But always the first to comment. So we 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 appreciate you, Nash, and have a good night, man. And enjoy enjoy the work the best you can over there. I know there's been some bad weather, so. Um, well, I but tell yeah, you, so, Nash seems like he's a pretty big dude, man. Um, he's huge. Like I saw him post a pull up video, and he he looked like he'd take you out, Josh. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think Nash and I together are the half ton of justice. 
<laughs> yeah, he, he looked like he, he looked pretty tall, man. He he looks like he he'd be about up to your height, and he's jacked. So, yeah, I'm I'm not jacked. I'm just uh, I'll, I'll absorb that punch. It, it sounds like that guy might might be like the Big Show, just a big dude, just super strong. And he may end up being like five two and just jacked, but like in the video, you know what I mean? Because Dustin, you know, you might think he's big, and then he turns up and he's five foot four. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, I'm just making jokes, man. I'm just making jokes. Dustin's not actually five four; he's somewhere between five six and a half, maybe. So, Josh can confirm that's not even too much of a stretch. Dustin's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i love you nosh you're the best <laughs> oh, yeah good luck with that dude hope you don't have any crack smokers on your bus that would suck um will never leave my mind i'm gonna say that to him every time <laughs> like that he's adorable yeah he's adorable bro <laughs> oh my god he's gonna be so mad and next week so next week dustin's in the weekend dustin's gonna be up here we're gonna record that hot wing video uh we're gonna be doing a video with Josh, uh, for your channel, where we're going to talk about what it's been like for the last 20 years, and we're going to do one if Jeremy shows up for for the Comic Con. Yeah, I've, uh, I've talked to Jeremy, and he's he's game, so we should be able to get that. Okay, set. so we'll just figure all the time and stuff this week, and I'll pack everything up and show up with the camera and mics and stuff. But um, so we're doing that, and then Dustin, we're going to record a video while all this else is going on for Dustin. He's picking up a cool book, so that we got a lot of cool stuff happening next weekend. I say cool that hot wing video. I'm fairly certain I'm going to punch him in the face in the middle of it. Like Dude, who comes up with that the idea? World you agreed with that. I, Just like, food, oh, if we hit 5K, a, we should box. Burn is not something you want to have to say, and that's no. what you're going to end up doing, man. You're going to burn I a hole through your tongue. Well, I know, and then it's like he goes, oh, we hit 5K, You should. we should box. And I'm like, sure, whatever, by July 1st. I'll agree to that. It'll never happen. And it's like, son of a Dang it. So yeah, like I just post like five videos a day every day. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Not all the time, but yeah, it's it's we've been trying to hustle, man. Um, hustle. And some does great, some do not. Um, which is crazy, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, like who I never would have thought five K would even be a thing. I figured we might be somewhere around that by December, and now it's just like, oh, okay. It's probably going to happen based on analytics and, oh, it's and projections. And I'm like, oh, this is going to suck. So I'm probably going to post a video like as we get close, basically just saying that, I don't know, what would offend people? Spider-Man sucks and Batman's awful and see if we can go back. Oh, <laughs> I don't have to fight. fight. I just – mm. on the boxing match. Dustin really wants to punch you. I don't know why. What? He really does. He's looking forward to it. <laughs> Dustin with? has already been sending me – pictures of boxing shoes and gloves and entire outfits he wants to wear what is his deal does he have some to get out did you bully him as a kid no it was the exact opposite the exact opposite it was you're bad the, you're the younger brother right yeah yeah we were not friends growing up no see my older brother and i he's he's four and a half years older than i am uh it, but i was always almost as big as him um uh, he used to beat go. the ever living stew out of me. Yeah. Uh, uh, until apparently one day I had enough, and my mom says she just heard like screaming and crying upstairs, and she goes tearing off up the stairs. I'm two years old, uh, and I'm sitting on top of him, just <laughs> and uh, we had a contentious relationship forever. If you had told me at any point during my youth that at some point I would voluntarily like go and have lunch with my older brother. I would have laughed in your face. Yeah. Uh, but we're friends now. Yeah. It's crazy how that works. It is yeah, for sure. So yeah, that's, so I don't know what the deal is, but it is what it is. You know, um, Austin, multiple videos. All right. Cause you keep them short and interesting. Like you hit on daily industry. Yeah. And that's something, man, where I'm really like Dustin and I both, I think we're, we're, we can be very long winded. So there's a lot of times where it's like, hey, I got to stop myself and I redo it a couple times. I'm like, just get to the point. This is a three minute topic. Hit on it. S stop. Like that Spawn video I did. I spent twice. I spent 15 minutes talking about Todd McFarlane and Spawn's background. And I'm like, okay, if people don't know who Todd McFarlane is and Spawn, 
they're probably not going to click on the video anyways. So I do it a couple of times, but we're trying, man. And it's, 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 I hope people are enjoying it. Uh, and that's why we put out the, the question yesterday is what do people actually enjoy? Cause we know what we're seeing a good reaction on, but you know, this channel's morphed. We've gone from one thing's kind of to another. Uh, and we don't want to lose kind of what brought people in the first place. Right. So, um, and it may end up just being a mix of everything, but it sounds like people really want the reviews, which is something we've really wanted to focus on. But man, the reviews, they, they take a lot of They're time consuming, aren't they? Yeah. Time consuming because you, and you have to really get good at them or else you end up just rambling on for 15 minutes. And it's like, okay, all you did was repeat the story and really gave no opinions on it. Um, so, but that's something I definitely want to do. Uh, and I think we're, we're probably going to focus on and see how that works, but, um, <laughs> yeah so but see dan he's not so big like he used to be growing up he was the big brother uh then nick outgrew him and uh yeah see he's nick gonna, gives off this something. persona of being like uh the the more intellectual kind of a thing right and he's got the glasses so he looks all uh like a, a librarian uh but what nick hides is that nick like was on the offensive line of a football team and he's put in the two a days and he's hit the gym and Nick works with, I mean, he, he builds stuff out of wood and stuff. He works with his hands. I think <laughs> Nick, Nick is deceptive. And I think Nick has got uh, a pretty wicked uppercut is going to be my guess. Now to yeah, we'll hit with an uppercut, you're going to have to get down real low. <laughs> we'll see. But the thing is, man, and a lot of people don't know this, but I had bad anger problems growing up. Um, and until he started became, drinking, and now he's okay. What now? I said until you started drinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh man, but um, but no, like really. And so I, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like he hits me in the face one time, I may freak out. And that's always been the joke, like with Dustin. Like I'm not gonna fight anybody. I'm either gonna just cry or shoot somebody because I'm just gonna like if somebody hits me in the face, that's gonna be one of two reactions. And I'm being facetious, but I really don't know what will happen. I told him, you better, you know, like, we're going in this, but you better not hit me in the damn nose because I will be mad. Just avoid the nose. And he's like, we're not wearing helmet or the, what is it, headgear? Head the face mask, yeah, the face guard. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm certainly wearing headgear. I, I have to go into an office and talk to people. I have to go sit in front of the president of my company and, and other VPs, uh, you know, daily and weekly. I can't show up with a broken what happened nose. To you? Well, my YouTube channel grew. <laughs> right. But here, here's uh, how that conversation goes. Eight. So my brother and I had to duke it out. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's exactly how the conversation would go. It's like, hey, Bob, um, I'm going to have to you know, reschedule because I have a comic book YouTube channel, and we hit 5,000 subscribers, so we punched each other in the face for whatever reason I agreed to this. Sorry. Like, that's not going to go well. Yeah. Um, so, But it's fun. It'll be fun. I'm very excited for it. Um, and guys, by the way, again, one more time, Josh and Burks, both of their links are in the video description below. Go give them a check. Uh, go give them a check. Give them a check. Yes, I don't care. Check. Me we'll, check. We'll take them. Go check out their channels um, because they do a lot of great stuff. Um, but all right, so we're getting close to that two-hour mark. I told you guys we got about 30 minutes left or so. Um, uh, what have we not hit on? Last Ronin, I think, was a big book this week. It was, and it was good, too. Oh, what do you think, Burke? It, it was so good. But I will say, it wasn't like I don't know. I didn't love it as much as I loved the first issue. If that makes sense, like it was still good. A lot of information happened yeah. in the book. I think the reason why I didn't like it as much as the first one was the fact that we already knew who the last Ronin was. Versus the first issue, we're like, "Who is it? Oh, is this? Does this mean something? Does this mean something?" The whole time. And this so, you, like, you know, so you kind of felt like there was nothing really left to to reveal. I'm, yeah, but like obviously we knew we were gonna figure out, you know, how that at least one of them died. Um, yeah, and, uh, I didn't particularly like the way that it happened, honestly. But overall, there was a lot of good stuff that happened, and we learned a lot. It just, I don't know, felt like the issue one hit me different than issue two. See, I felt the opposite. I felt like I liked issue two a little more um, because, like, you really got some deep emotion out of the character like to see him sit there and like have that moment in his head and, and then 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 the toast and like 
that got to me a little bit because I mean, think about that. I mean, that those were your brothers. That was your life, and they're gone, and and now they're stuck in your head, and you you know you can't get it out. And like, I couldn't imagine having that kind of mental breakdown, if you will. And, and that to me, I think, is what got to me. Um, the fight scenes were cool, um, and and you guys know I'm not as big a turtle fan as you are, and 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 Dustin is, and you know I don't know all the small inc- intricacies of all like that. The end with the helmet, I didn't get that until Dustin brought it up. Um, um, but what did you think, Josh? Uh, I fall more on the side that you did. I think number one set up uh, a real slam bang, like, holy cow, what's going on? It was a, it, it was a good, exciting read. And uh, I think it ended with a cool reveal. It was kind of a double reveal, right? Cause you also got, Hey, April's still around too. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the second one, it was a little bit quieter, but it wasn't, I mean, if you're going up, you know, the story wise, normally issue number one comes up like this and number two does like this. And you hope to God number three will come back up. Right. Well, this one, the number one was like this. And I think number two still kept an upward trajectory. It wasn't a steep, but it was yeah. still there. And it was some meaningful stuff. I like some of the storytelling things they did, uh, like the little flash to the black and white section uh, with the memory there. I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah. I thought that was really well done. And I thought some of the reveals that they had uh, were well done too, especially the one that was kind of a play uh, where they kind of tricked you a little bit with the reveal. Yeah. Like, is this what it is? Uh, oh, no, it's not, but this is still cool. And yeah. uh, overall, I thought the theme of the issue was really good. And I thought it showed, I mean, it's a shame that it took what it took to get that kind of character development for, for him. But his character seems to have developed uh, pretty strongly during this intervening time period. Yeah. Um, and I thought I'm it was really interesting to reveal about the mutation. Do what? I thought it was an interesting reveal about the, their mutation or his mutation. Yeah, I was gonna- right. I did too. I thought that was really interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Yep. And, but that, that panel I showed about the knife, which is not like, uh, not a spoiler. I think that's been shown in at one point was supposed to be, I think the cover for this, um, God, that was, I think the most beautiful image in quite some time. I put it all in the thumbnail. single sp- uh, page spread. Yeah. With nothing on it except for the side. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, that was a hard hitting emotional moment there. Right. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, Here's why. Here's why I give this book a B, Panda. Okay, here's why. My guy, Raphael, he's my favorite. Dustin and I, we have a lot of similarities. Like, we both like Raphael. We both think we're gonna win anything, no matter what. Uh, Raph dying at the hands of Karai is absolutely stupid. I know he was injured while he was fighting her. He already had arrows and swords and everything already and he's bleeding out before he even gets to fight her. I get it. Yeah. Karai ending Raphael's life. I didn't like it. I'm sorry, Kevin Eastman. I didn't like it, bro. I have to say uh, he was so beat up. He was so so yeah. beat up by the time that that happened. I agree. Uh, uh, I mean, it was amazing that he had been able to keep going. Yeah. He was run, he's running off adrenaline at that point, which I totally sure. get. Like someone in your family's dying, specifically your father, you know, mm-hmm. totally get it. But I don't know. I mean, but honestly, like that for Raphael to die like that, that is totally him to run off hot headed, going to take on everyone by myself and get myself killed. It's what they've always talked about to him to not do because that's exactly what will happen to him if he does it. And that's exactly how he died. So it, it does make sense. I just didn't like that Karai was the one that killed him. But like you guys said, there was a ton of stuff that happened in it. We learned about Casey Casey Jones being the dad and the daughter. We saw um, April not having an arm and a leg from some sort of explosion that we don't know about. We got that. Uh, obviously, he's mutating more. Um, and the Fugitoid head at the end. And a few other things, obviously, too. So do we I just think thought it, the whole setup at the beginning with the uh, like the dinner table and what mm-hmm. was planned for the reveal there, 
Uh, so we, the audience, saw it, even though the turtles didn't get to see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought there was some really cool. I, I liked the way they handled that. I thought that was really well done. So what did you get? What do you guys think is going to be issue five? Do you think everybody's just going to all die, and it's just going to be basically like the end of the turtles? Because it's you mean just issue three, be, huh? You mean issue three? No, no, no. I mean, like, because uh, there's five issues of this, right? Yeah, there is five. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, the end of issue five, boom, last panel, everybody's dead. No more turtles, no more anything. Do you think that's going to happen, or do you? But like, I feel like this is just like the last story they ever would. No, you, you know what I mean. What would you say? I think he's going to live. You think so? Mm-hmm, I do, and I think that uh... he and Jenica are going to have little turtle babies. <laughs> Is that what's going to happen? Jenica is not around, and Jenica is supposed to be with, in the current IDW run, she's supposed to be with um, Casey, which is weird because Casey ends up getting with April. But, like, that that's a whole other topic. About yeah. I just dad. had to bring up Jenica because I know how much Dustin loves her. Eastman like- said that's not my turtles, so I'm doing my own thing now. Uh, he said yeah. Jenica's not his turtles. You know what I mean? Like with this story, it's well, out of canon. So I'm just saying, like, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. I will say I love I love Kevin Eastman's uh, art. Those six pages or four pages mm-hmm. or whatever, that was great. No, but I do think that Mikey will live at the end. Uh, how do you guys? What is that guy's name? Heroku? Uh, whatever yeah. that guy. I think he's gonna die at the end. And maybe oh, I really hope so. They're doing something with. Uh, the girl Casey Jones. Though. There's a reason why she's in that book. Something's going to happen with her. You think they're going to do like a big reveal or a spinoff or something? There's, there's going to be something. There's a reason why they brought her in there. Why else would she be in there? You know what I mean? There's something. She's going to do something. Well, I mean, let's ask that question. If they were to do a spinoff of that character, and assuming that uh, Leo kind of fills the splinter role, uh, right? Uh, would you be interested in reading the further adventures? I don't think so. See, that's what I thought. I don't think anybody wants to read it. No. Uh, I, I think it's a cool moment in time, but I don't think it's a, a sustainable story to follow. I don't think that she's going to like get her own spinoff is what I'm saying. I, I just think that she's going to be a central point in the story. Like, I think at the end, maybe she's going to take over like the foot soldier clan or something. You know what I mean? Or, be like the new mayor of the city or something. I don't know. I feel like there's just a reason why she was added to the story. She's going to be a central point. You don't think she was just there to bring back a nostalgia factor with Casey Jones? Nope. No. I mean, now with that art that has the picture of the sword, it's the kind of the, the Superman death of Superman homage cover, right? With the yeah. sword with Casey Jones mask hanging off of it. Uh, and then you're, we're, we're left wondering, okay, so there was this explosion. April lost a, a arm and a leg. Uh, apparently it killed Casey, right? Uh, apparently we don't know uh, what the exact scenario is there. So I think there's still some information to come on Casey, original, original recipe Casey. Uh, I'll be curious to see if they do make that reveal. Okay. All right. So, anything else about the last run in issue number two? I will say it's selling like hotcakes. I really thought with the, it's the highest printed IDW it, book ever. It's yeah. a what? Highest printed IDW book ever. How many h- copies? Oh, I don't know the exact number, but I know it was the largest print run ever. Wow. Uh, I, I just really, I expected there to be some drop off because most of the time, a lot of people buy issue number one. And there's generally a pretty significant drop off on issue number two. Uh, I did not order any fewer copies of issue number two than I did of number one because I I liked number one and I knew I could sell number two because I could talk people into it. Um, I'm already out. I sold the two, uh, the one in ten uh, incentives. I sold those uh, all of the ones those we got today. I ran out, so I'm done. I didn't I got even nothing. see those anywhere, man. You must have had those hiding in the back. No, how would I sell them out of the back, dude? They were up on the shelf. Man, yes, did. I didn't see him Wednesday or Friday when I went in. I went in twice this week, by the way, and both times spent more money than I should have. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> did you guys Look, see the second printing cover for it? I, I haven't seen that yet. Uh, I believe that's on FOC this pull week. Up, pull it up, uh, Nick. Oh, yeah. Let me see. So, And then, Josh, I did tell the guy, when was it? 
a week or two ago that I wanted to be on there for all of um, printings for the Ronin. Second printing. I still got a few. Um, oh, there it is. Yep. So uh, Austin was right. And I just discovered somehow today we had a guy who decided when he picked up his pull box, he did not want, and he he was late coming in, but he still had a first print of number one in his box, and he decided he didn't want it. And I was like, that's fine with me. <laughs> um, okay. I'm. Oh, let me share the screen. I, I'm not a huge fan of this thing. Well, it's not. It's not bad. Okay. I just. It's not Streamyard, so it's a little different. All right, here we go. Yeah, Austin Reigns was correct. All right, so, um, yeah, here it is. Over 130,000 copies for, for Team and Team number two, and I believe this should show the second print cover. And Dustin's going to do an update video once he gets back on issue three. Here it is. Oh, oh yeah. It doesn't look as good as what's in the uh, no. um, the the book, but that's still really cool. It is. Like, that is awesome. So both covers, cover A and a second print, are both spoiler covers. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what I find interesting about that is uh, the artistic choice to spend an entire splash page showing that one relatively small thing uh but the emotional impact of that was really powerful i thought yep uh I, that was a smart storytelling choice yeah for sure all right well last thing i wanted to hit on if you've not read snow angels it's on comiXology it is from um jeff lemire and jock it's called um when you said snow angels, I totally thought that you meant you were going to shoot pictures of you and, and uh, your family out in the snow that we had this week. <laughs> I real, I was like, man, oh, that, that Nick is I just going to be out there. I was like, what? No, we did build a small snowman that looks like, um, after it melted, looked like a, a thing that probably shouldn't be in your front yard. Um, I did notice that, Panda, yeah. But yeah, it is really cool. So check it out. Um, like I said, it's a Comixology exclusive, so um, you can't go wrong with Lemire and Jock. I believe that's who it is, right? Yeah, Lemire and Jock. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, all right, so we've talked about reviews. We've talked about all of the news. Um, I know, Josh, this is one thing we didn't do, and I know you brought it up as soon as you first showed up, and then we'll jump into the hot topic. All right, Josh, cover of the week and read of the week. It's real easy for me. They're both the same book. Although the read of the week, this just barely edges out TMNT, Last Drone, and number two. Uh, X-Men Legends, number one. That yeah. cover is pure 90s nostalgia. <laughs> and there's a big reveal in here, too, for everybody who has always wondered about a certain um, uh, possible third brother to Havoc and Cyclops. Yep. That, this is big. Uh, but this this right here, phenomenal read, phenomenal uh, cover. I've got the poster up on the wall at the store because I totally dig this 90s uh, mm -hmm. love fest. Uh, great stuff. So that's my pick of the week for cover and story. Right on. All right, Burke, what was your top pick and uh, read of the week and then cover of the week? They're the same thing too. Future State Nightwing number two. Really? I did not expect okay, that. I haven't read that yet, man. Tell me why I should care about Future State Nightwing. Oh, it's so, okay, first off. The next <laughs> Batman, Talk about being put on the spot. The next Batman and Nightwing team up in this book. Uh, they did an issue one as well. Yeah. You kind of get a feel for why Nightwing is, like where he's at, what he's doing during uh, Future State. Um, we get some magistrate in here. We get a reveal of one of the magistrate generals and who it is, though I wasn't a huge fan of the whole thing. But overall, it was a great story, and we get a ton of nostalgia and callbacks to other Bat family members in this book. So, and I just, I just love 
Nightwing and Wally West and sidekicks. So, question. Do you feel that between issue one and issue two of this two-part story, that they told a story that had a beginning, middle, and an end? I don't know if I could say it had a ending, but it like there was a reveal at the end of the book. Honestly, I honestly feel like Future State as a whole has actually done a lot better than people thought it was or would do because I want to continue reading all of these books. Because oh, that's they're going to give it to you. That's how good all of them have been. I know because Red Hood is going to be having his own four-issue story coming up. And he had a uh, backstory, and I think it was The Dark Detective number two or three. Right. Yeah, um, it, that was a really good story written by Joshua Williamson, who's also going to do the Red Hood story. But yeah, I feel like overall, overall they've hit it out of the park with uh, Future State. It's been phenomenal. And yeah, this cover is sick. And what he does with his sticks in this book, oh, so good. So is that the same guy that did all those Flash covers that were so gorgeous? Uh, and Hook Lee did all the Flash covers. Um, this is not the same guy. And Hook Lee mm-hmm. did... Okay, because uh, it had a very similar feel, and I knew Josh was doing the Flash run for a little bit. So, and Hook Lee's doing the Power Rangers covers for Cover A, right now, or the Mighty Morphin. Here, here it is. He's doing. By the these- way, that was a silly reveal in that book, and I don't even care about like Power Rangers. But like, I just felt like the new Green Ranger should have been somebody of like, and maybe this guy is, but I just felt like that guy really wasn't of much value, and then all of a sudden now he's the new Green Ranger. And that's just from outside looking in. So I don't know what a Power oh, Rangers fan is. He was in issue number one of Go Go Power Rangers. Yeah. So dated Kim before Tommy did. And he was a friend of the whole team. And he was in the last couple of issues as well. He was basically a character created by Ryan Parrott, who's writing both series right now. And there was a reason why he did that. You know, he wanted to bring back a character he created as a new. It makes sense. Character. And it's it, it and it does considering you know that's Kim's ex uh, as a new Green Ranger and Tommy used to be the Green Ranger now he's a White Ranger and there, there's gonna be a love triangle and the whole team it, it's gonna be interesting. Sounds like I, Days of Our Lives. I, I, I've I've known for a, a long time. I guess it from the beginning that's what it was, but I've known yeah. for a long time. And I, I just feel like. Hey, sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say I just feel again from outside looking in. I don't know much, but when I saw who it was and. I was just like, really? You know, almost felt like a Captain Universe type moment. <laughs> no, way different, way better. If, if anyone's read Go Go Power Rangers, they they wouldn't feel that way. Yeah. But it, and again, outside looking in, I don't really care one way or another. I haven't been reading it. I could see how you could think that. I think everyone wanted it to be Lord Draken, but Lord Draken's not even on Earth right now. He's with the Omega Rangers, so makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, my cover of the week was this one. I've, I've been Real using this cover. on every thumbnail I could because I love it. Um, I don't I don't know why. I just genuinely love the cover. Uh, read of the week for me, no doubt, Thor. I love me some good Throg. Um, and I'd love to see them do a Throg miniseries or something because I would buy all of that. Um, the worst read for me, and I know I didn't say that, but God, I'm not digging this at all. And, you know, I tried to be, like, positive about it, but... Holy doo doo! Uh, oh, and I was laughing earlier, Burke, because you were talking about Nightwing and how you love you, Nightwing, and you know, you know what his name is. Taylor taking over Nightwing. I'll tell you that. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah, but I, be, yeah. But I was laughing because I almost what I want to say, but we're Family Channel. Was like Burke. I know you love you some good, you know what his name is, and then I realized I can't say that, but you no, get the joke. I do, and you know what's funny is in Teen, uh, Future State Teen Titans. I saw uh, the panel like yesterday where somebody's like uh, basically yeah. made the innuendo. It's, it's um, his full name mixed with death stroke. So yeah. it, you, you can figure it out. It's <laughs> um, and if you're not familiar with what his name is, his name is Dick Grayson. Nothing wrong with that. But in the way I wanted to use it, I couldn't. So I just started laughing to myself. I, my sense of humor is terrible. But anyways, all right. So. Uh, we're all done with with that piece of it, uh, so let's get into the can reason. I that, can I pull that future state thread just a smidge more? Go ahead. I gotta ask. Uh, you seem to be pretty happy with the future state books, and for me, 
so far, uh, the future state books that I really thought were going to be really good and I was really excited about have been utter letdowns. And the ones that I thought were going to be like, eh, have been great. Uh, Aquaman was fantastic. I really loved it. Immortal Wonder Woman was fantastic. Really good. Uh, the Nubia backup story was really good. Uh, I get to the regular, the Wonder Woman everybody's so excited about, Yara Floor, and it read like it was issue one of a thousand, not issue one of two. Like, we're going to get this much story, a whole bunch of weirdness, and it didn't make any sense. Uh, it was just, hey, look at my cool outfit and my talking, my flying horse. Aren't I cool? Uh, I really was disappointed in it, uh, but you seem to have had a different reaction. So I wanted to like Nick's Batman. I wanted to like Dark Detective. I didn't care. It didn't, it didn't hook me at all. Here's what I'm going to say about it. Uh, I thought the next Batman, like story-wise, like it started here and then it slowly started going here, right? And the Dark Detective, for me, started here, and it slowly got better. It's really weird how that went. I do feel like what they did is, like, they're like, okay, we're going to create these characters to see if people like them, um, and then we can go from there, since we already built it out that it's in the future, so we can still tell these stories later if we want to, since it's, you know, farther in the timeline. Uh, I do. Say, I will say that, like, I really liked Nightwing. Nightwing is obviously, I'm always going to like it. Like it. Flash was pretty good. Um, what was it? Shazam has been really good. Teen Titans has been amazing. Teen uh, Titans I've, good. I'll give you that one. And I've heard really good things about Superman uh, House War, of Bell. War of the Worlds or something like that. I heard really good things about that. So I haven't read it, but I've heard great things about it. But I do agree. I, I thought the next Batman, the story would be a little bit better than him just going through the city, being followed by a magistrate just trying to take two people that killed someone to the police. I thought it would be and, more. And all that without them really establishing anything of where the timeline is, what the, what the magistrate is, because it's not a person, it's an organization. Yeah. And they, uh, you figure out who number zero six is in Nightwing. Um, and then zero one hasn't really been revealed yet. So I don't know. I, I think it's, I, I've enjoyed it. A lot more than I thought I would because before it came out, I did not think it was going to be good. Uh, that um, future state book that like tells the timeline, it does tell you like how many years in the future each one of those things is. So. But see, that's part of the other thing that bugs me too is it, it feels very inconsistent from book to book. Uh, like we took, we took something that was all on you know concurrent and now this one is here and this one is here and this one is here. It just felt very weird. Sure, them, and, and I could see that. I could see that. It almost felt like it's like the DCEU, where it's like, okay, we're all going to create our own stories, and we're just going to make them good. Though I will say, the magistrate, like, has been weaved in a lot of different books. I agree with there, that, yeah. There, there's been a lot of like story building in all the books that go that do go together. Um, I felt like it was more together than Powers of Ten and House of Ten, or House of X were. Because that felt like two completely different stories to me. But I don't know. I've enjoyed it. But I'm a DC fanboy, so. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nope. Nope. Although that. they did close, they did cause um, Diamond to shut down their brand new facility. So that's unfortunate. That's a whole nother topic. DC's yeah. publishing practices. I mean, you get the quality of the books is one thing. Uh, the publishing practices are another completely different thing. Um, I don't think anyone likes what DC did. No. Uh, not at all. No, not at all. All right. I, I will say, uh, just as a side note of interest, uh, quite a few of the uh, DC publishing people uh, who were all laid off, uh, effective, that they, they were got the notice they were being laid off a couple months ago. Uh, but those layoffs all really took place yesterday and Thursday. Uh, a lot of those people, the good ones, have landed at Dynamite, for example. So I'm hoping to see that company do something besides 47 covers of Vampirella and uh, Red Sonia. 
uh, every month. I hope these guys can help them come up with some other properties to tell stories yeah. about because these are good guys and uh, Dynamite is like the opposite problem of DC, right? They've got the publishing part down pat, but their stories are garbage. Uh, they're focused yeah. on properties that have like fans, this this many fans, but they will buy all the covers so it looks like they're selling something. <laughs> uh, right on. Look, this whole platform's in beta still. We're getting there. All right, so the hot topic. I'm pumped about this because, Burke, I'm always super chatting you going, Barry Allen's the best or He's something not. about it. So Barry Allen versus Wally West. Oh, and I even did a video about all the reasons why Wally West is the best. So you yeah. guys should check that out because that was well-produced and I think had a lot of great content in there. I kept waiting for it to like get to the point. It was like 10 minutes of just like, what did I just watch? <laughs> It was excellent, actually, and I, I'm so surprised. So many because I didn't expect anybody to actually get it, but the fact that people finally got it, I was like, yes. So, all right. So Barry Allen, Wally West, who's the better Flash, and why? Uh, I obviously am going to be Team Barry, and then at the end, we will ask the chat who won and their opinions, and I will certainly uh, pull up chats and arguments and stuff like that from the chat as we go because this is what it's it's going to be about, right? It's it's interaction here. Josh, for you, you you knew what the topic was going to be. So where are you at? Where are you at with Barry Allen or Wally? Uh, the Flash or Kid Flash? Wait just a second here. Wally West was also the Flash for about twenty years. <laughs> Let's not forget that. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, for me, it's it's one of those cases where uh, it's generational. Right. You've got people who grew up, Barry Allen was the Flash, and that was all there was to it. Uh, and then you had this whole other generation uh, after uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth. Wally West was their Flash. But hold on. Hold on, Josh. Why was he their Flash? What did Barry do to allow that to happen? Well, massive spoiler alert for a story that's. 35 years old, but uh, he sacrificed himself. Oh, did he? Uh, and uh, the most heroic thing that it could, you could possibly do. Right, because uh, Barry did that. Did, did Wally do that? Uh, no. <laughs> but Barry... Uh, I, I thought Barry, uh, that was something that DC did that had some guts to do, was they told a story. They killed off one of their major characters uh, who's been around forever, had a very loyal fan base, uh, and they killed him off. Yeah. Uh, it was a great send-off. It was, it was good. Uh, and then they bring in Wally, who has been around, but uh, it's like the sidekick graduated to being the, the main character. And uh, different personality, sure, uh, different issues, different takes on things. Uh, we got a new co-host. That's awesome. Uh, but uh, I mean, and it's, but you have a very hard line for a lot of people. Yep. That it's just a generational thing. I grew up Barry Allen. Barry Allen's my guy. That's Flash. Uh, for me, Wally is yeah, Kid Flash. It's See? just what he was, right? Yeah, and always um, will be. I'm trying to get the digs in why he can't respond. <laughs> but I can't argue with people who like, dude, I've read 20 years of this guy as the Flash. Josh, you have to have a definitive answer here. That's the point of the hot topic. Jay Garrick. <laughs> That's almost where I wanted to come in and just surprise Burke and be like, no, screw them both. It's actually Jay Garrick, and here's why. But Anybody that wears that Jay. tin pan on his head and can pull it off, that's uh, that's pretty impressive guy. All right, so that's your, yeah, no, that's your me, opening I, argument I if you don't have my, one. My generational guy, the one I read, and the one that hit me in the feels with Christ on Infinite Earths, uh, when I read that, and I'm like, did that just really happen? Oh, my God. Uh, Barry Allen. Yeah. But I, I can't – I'm not so hard on the fence. I, like I said, I've got a best friend. One of my best friends is a huge Wally West fan, and he will argue Wally West all day, and we've had this argument for the past 15, 20 years. Uh, so I understand it. 
And uh, I'm not nearly as hard over on it must be one or the other as I used to be. And uh, But if, for me, it's Barry Allen. But I understand that Burke is going to feel very passionate about Wally West and that uh, he's going to have a good argument for why Wally is better than the heroic and self-sacrificing best detective or second best detective in the world, uh, <laughs> Barry Allen. And I'm sure that Wally's hot temper and uh, his Mobius chair are going to figure in. <laughs> What's up, Thomas? Come on, Josh. Now you have to have a definitive art. Like you can't, that's like saying, I'm trying to think of a good, uh, good thing here, but you got to have a very, I had a segment, definitive argument. Did you not hear me just subtly slide all that? No, in? I saw that. I saw, but you're like, you can't, you can't understand. We got go at it hard, Josh. Don't be you like got, Justin and, and you be on the wayside. It. You got a, an honorable guy. You've got a guy who uh, puts himself in harm's way uh, versus uh, a hothead with a attitude problem. There we uh, go. There we go. I, 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 because that's what he was to me. Uh, going up and I realize his characters evolved, but yeah, I got to say uh, for me, it's Barry Allen. So I thought it was stupid in flash number 50 where they gave Wally the ability to be faster. I thought that was dumb. They shouldn't have done that. He was already. And they, and they, are, they only did that to appease the fanboys, but they still DC still constantly craps on Wally. And I think everybody they agrees. Constantly crap on Wally. And it's, you know why? We'll get out. You know why? Was there and he doesn't like sidekicks. Oh, so see, see, you just admitted that Barry's better because he's not a sidekick like Wally. <laughs> Don't try to it. shoot the man's argument down before he's had a chance to make it. Look, you guys have all seen the Babylon. You all know how these debates work. Yeah, it's but okay he's to get a little frisky. Rile him. He's he's cool, calm, and collected. Look at this. He's not even paying attention to you. My daughter's over here trying to read more of my comic books. <laughs> well, just give her the good Flash ones, man. You like comic books? Yeah, give me one flash one. I don't, I, I don't want to give you a flash one. You'll destroy it. <laughs> hey, Bert, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but is there any chance at all that she has read uh, Fiona McCool and the Hound of Ulster? Oh, no, just sit down. No, you know that no. I'm ready to get my speech on why Wally's better now. It's been five minutes. Uh, we'll we'll hook you up with a copy of Fiona McCool and the Hound of Ulster by Stephen Butler and his daughter Lily. Um, fantastic book. It's Irish uh, Celtic mythology told in the anthropomorphic style of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. It sounds super weird, but it really works. And it's a dad and daughter doing a comic book together. Uh, we'll we'll get you a copy. I'll I'll hook up with Nick and we'll shoot one your way. Sounds it's going to have the Haven logo on it, so I apologize in advance. Sounds good. All right. Hit hit it, Steve. Do you have it typed out and written? No. Okay. Well, at least you're not drunk like Dustin gets and then doesn't make any sense. So this should be fun. Well, I, I know that he types his notes because I can or he writes them because I've seen his notes before. And, and another he, thing, saber tooth. He always has it right in front of him during his, his video recordings, which is cool. Yeah, you should be the editor having to go through and, and skip every five seconds when he's referring. <laughs> oh, gotta skip that part. All right, go ahead, Burke. Floor is yours. Okay, so Wally West. Uh, what this happened? Sorry. <laughs> uh, Wally West is significantly better because, for first off, he is more relatable. Um, he's not just just a random scientist who's scared to talk to people and girls. And uh, Wally West is personable. He's younger. Um, and he's so kind of an agent. An extrovert instead of an introvert makes him inherently yeah, he's cool. Not an introvert. Um, he is like all of us, where he likes these comic book characters so much so that he wanted to become one. And that's how he became Kid Flash, is where he did the same accident that caused Barry Allen to become the Flash. Um, yes, he is Kid, he was Kid Flash, but he actually. His very first appearance in Flash 110, he wore the same costume as the Flash. He didn't get the Kid Flash costume, so I think it's like 134 or 133. Anyways, uh, he also became the Flash for 20 years, and he is also faster than Barry Allen. Everyone knows that. Um, he can do everything that Barry can, but faster. He outran the Black Flash 
all the way to the end of time. He went all the way to the end of time right, going against him. The Black Flash just stopped going after him because he couldn't. He couldn't catch him. Um, he, he has beaten teleportation. Um, I don't know. He's just more relatable, likable. And if you read Flash Forward, you can kind of like feel for him, uh, especially as a family man where he lost his kids. I have because, to say, Flash Forward was very hard hitting. And like he just, I don't know. He's a very fun character, more relatable. Um, and his suit is just better too. His DC Rebirth suit, where he is. He's basically Kid Flash in a Flash costume put together with his red hair flying in the wind. It's just he has a better suit. He's more relatable, and he's faster, and he was also the Flash for 20-plus years while uh, Barry Allen was gone. Now, hang on a second. You said he can do everything that Barry Allen can do. False. Those words came out of your mouth, and that one statement uh, I disagree with. See, he feels so bad about it, he had to duck out. <laughs> uh, I mean, Barry Allen has got a a, a criminologist background, right? He's yep. not just a guy who runs fast. He's a guy who puts the puzzle pieces together and figures things out and solves crime. <laughs> he's adorable. <laughs> he's like Dustin. He's adorable. Uh, I, to me, the more relatable piece, I, I really think, and I kind of think this is a more interesting character in a lot of ways because uh, the more extroverted characters get a lot of press and they get a lot of hype, but the more introverted characters can, you can often tell a more interesting story with. Yeah. Uh, and I think, yeah, uh, Barry Allen's a nerd. Uh, he's a nerd. He's a scientist. He's a criminologist. He's a guy who's a detective. He can put things together uh, and solve crimes, not just fight crimes, right? And he knows how to use the flash powers a whole lot better than Wally West does. West, what Wally, Wally West does. Also, he can come. He can like vacuum compress a, a, an entire outfit into a rain. Let's. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about some incredible skills. That's amazing. Uh, Luis, we're talking about Barry Allen versus Wally West. Who's the best? And, That's right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so I, I don't know. Uh, is 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 Wally faster? Sure. Does that make him better? No. I concur. And Wally Man, I... uh, teleport? Can he? Is is his speed force a faster version of the speed force? Whatever. Sure. Uh, that doesn't make him better. I mean, you can any any particular superpower. Everybody has more of it than Batman, and yet Batman's yep. the most interesting character in the DC universe. Oh, we should use that when he comes back. That's a good one. Uh, I mean, that's that's my two cents. That's a good argument. So, and then one. Of the, so here's here's what I'm going to bring up. Maybe he can st not hear me. Maybe he can. But so I, I wrote my notes down so I wouldn't forget. But first off, Barry is universally recognized as the Flash. If you say the name Barry Allen, people are going to know it's the Flash. You yep. say Wally West, they're going to be like, Walmart? Or, you know what I mean? Like, what? Barry Allen? People know it's the Flash. Now, in every iteration of every comic book ever, who's one of the founding members of the Justice League? Not Wally West. Nope. Barry Allen. So that, my friend. And plus, if it wasn't for the Flash in the 50s, I mean, he that that comic book and Barry Allen coming in. I mean, is now I don't want to say single handedly responsible for reinvigorating comic DC comics during that time, but you would be pretty to number four. What now? Talking about showcase number four. Yeah, I mean, him coming in through the Silver Age, probably one of the most critical characters to kind of kick things off. Yep, he, that's that's where most people pointed to as the beginning of the Silver Age is right there. So yeah. Yep. So I'm not saying Barry is the best and there's no other options, but I'm saying he's the best. And, you know, Wally just isn't. And Barry let it, you know, he sacrificed himself. I, I think that saying like, uh, which one is better is kind of like discussing whether you like you know, cherry topping on your cream, uh, your cheesecake better or blueberry. It's two different things. They're both good. Uh, I get it. But, uh, 
clearly the one is preferred uh, is better than the other. So yeah, I gotta say Barry Allen for me. Uh, he might not run the the socks off of Wally West, but he'll figure out the smartest path to get there and still beat him. That's right. He is the Batman of whatever. <laughs> oh, the Batman of speed. Um. So you said that's Jason Garrick. What are you referring to? Uh, Jay Garrick, uh, f- the Flash back in the day. No, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, okay. He says, you say Barry Allen. I think the bloke from down the street, Wally West, is the Flash. Okay. And then he said, that's Jason Garrick, though, not Barry Allen. What are you talking about, Dad? What are you talking about, Tosh? Hey, Ronnie uh, Ramos. Welcome. Kenneth Bird, what's happening, my friend? What's up, Ronnie? I hope you're doing well. I think this might be the first time we're seeing you in a live stream, so we're kind of having um, a different version of the Comic Book Babylon because Dustin, Justin, and, and folks aren't here. Uh, but it's glad we're glad to have you. We're on the tail end of things where we're having our hot topic discussion once Burke gets back about Wally West versus the Flash and kind of just hanging out at the end of the night. So um, I know I promised these. There he is. I know I promised these guys about two hours, and I'm going to hold two that as true as possible. So did you hear any of our arguments or no? No, I was helping putting my daughter to sleep real quick. Oh, you're good. And if you need to hop off and do that, man, yeah, I told you. We're done. We're done. Okay. So did you go with the snow cold or what? I, I did hear you say that Wally West can't do everything that Barry Allen can do. So here's my argument back to the like, – I heard that as I was walking out of the room. Uh, Barry Allen has a scientific approach to the speed force. He's trying to understand it more and learn about it more. Wally West has a spiritual connection to the speed force. Like he was trapped in it a long time. He was already faster and he can just do way, way, way. But Barry Allen would have figured to get a way out. He He did. You would think so. You would think so. But no, I, Barry, Allen, Barry Allen is smarter than Wally West, but he is not faster, and um, he doesn't have the, quite the connection to the Speed Force. That's why the, his light is white now compared to Barry Allen's is still just uh, orange. And if you go by speed, like blue is the next one faster. White means you're faster and you have a bigger connection to the Speed Force. So, so what about Batman? I mean, Batman is connection to the speed force and speed itself with being better as a character. Are you, I mean, is that the point you're trying to make? He's just more relatable too. I will say this. I I always like Barry Allen more because I like the flash where I've watched every single episode of every single season of the flash. And I have every single book of the flash rebirth run from zero or from one, the one shot, and then one through current. And like, I really liked Barry Allen more. And I started researching why people were saying Wally West was better. And after like reading some Wally West and reading Barry Allen, it just, it hits you different reading Wally West. It's just, he's more relatable character. He's more fun. He is kind of a hothead sometimes, like you saw in Flash War. But I also feel like Wally West gets a bad rap after what Tom King did to him. And heroes in crisis. So, well, let's just forget heroes in crisis ever happened because that That's was a disaster never from happened. start to finish. That should uh, never can anybody tell me why Harley Quinn is able to beat anyone? She can't. She's ne- and yet there she was doing it, and it made no the sense. Should, the clown hunter should have killed her in, la- in the last Batman. <laughs> he I'm is not going to argue that. That's true. He is more relatable. <laughs> some, well, how do I say this respectably? He's not just some nerdy, sciencey guy that wants to talk about all these different things. Like he actually is just a normal dude who's super smart, obviously because he's a Flash. He's not Barry Allen, but he's just—he's a normal guy. He's got a family just like you and I, and he want, like I said, he wanted to become a superhero so bad that he created himself to be a superhero. So are you from? Are you a, are you a fan of the the Incredibles? I am. Do you like the Incredibles. Mm-hmm. 
to me, Wally West is what if instead of uh, telling the kid to go away, so he later comes back as Syndrome and he's evil. Oh. Wally is like, oh, it's, I'll be your sidekick, okay. But had 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 Barry Allen said, you know, hit the hit the brakes, kid, you're annoying me. Uh, he would have turned into Syndrome, right? He he would have gone that way. Uh, it's how he strikes me. I feel you. I feel you. Uh, so, among us, Champ Dewey Day Trader, have you seen the Flash Rebirth costume? Because the Flash Rebirth costume is incredible. The Flash Rebirth costume kind of reminds me of uh, well, was Flash Flash Cyclops' Rebirth. costume from the 90s. Mm. Like a Flash version a little bit. It's just, it's so good. I love it. So, some of my points I was making a moment ago, I was discussing them with Josh to make sure they were good points. You know what I mean? When, when you think of the Flash universally, and I say Barry Allen, people are going to be like, oh, that's the Flash. They're going to know who that is, right? That's, sure. why he's, that's why he's in the DC movies. Sure. He's in the TV shows. You say Wally West, people are going to be like, what? But you know why? Because Barry Allen is the best. He's universally recognized as the Flash. So It doesn't think, mean he's better, though. Hang oh. on just a second. Get out of here with that stuff, Dan Ickery. That ain't right. A train. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, so Dan wins wins the conversation. <laughs> hey, he's better than the blur from Heroes Reborn. I'm almost certain of it. I'll give you that. Wally West will be a better character. He than... needs to come into uh, Titans season three or four. Who? Wally West. Yeah, because you know, he's, a, he's a sidekick type character like Tin well, Titans are. Well... You walked into it, man. I will say this: the way that they portrayed Wally on the on the Flash TV show, they basically merged Wallace West and Wally West into one single character. And I get it, like as a diversity thing, totally get it. But the fact that we haven't seen the OG Wally West, who is, like I said, the fastest Flash, and is universally like a top twenty-five comic book character of the last 20 years is kind of ridiculous to me. IGN ranked them 23, Josh. IGN don't know crap. All right. All right. So who is always in every iteration, who's a founding member of the Justice League? I don't know. We're talking about the Justice League. Barry Allen, right? Because he's the best. Just sure. I mean, sure. He was a founding member. Uh, Wally, in every iteration has Wally ever even Wally been like also been in the Justice League? What now? Wally West has also been in the Justice League. Yeah, but he's not a founding member. He was like he's like the backup, right? After Barry died, is that when they let him in? I don't know. Probably. He was. What is that? Oh man, what is the kids' Justice League version? What do they call those guys? Uh, There's a kids team that's like the Justice League version. Titans? No, I thought there was something else. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. I'm trying to find a way to relate him back to being a sidekick then and nothing more, but I'm not coming up with a good well, argument for that. He's more than that. And very young justice. Here's what that's I'm what he is. He's, young, he's a young Justice character at best. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Flash annual number one. They had all the sidekicks in there. They had Aqualad. They had um, Donna Troy. They had Nightwing. They had Wally West. And Batman was trying to tell all the sidekicks to do something. And Barry Allen says to Wally, you are not a sidekick anymore. You have been the Flash and you are the Flash. And I look at you as an equal. We are both the Flash. So Barry Allen. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> the fingers were crossed in the back. Read speed metal, because it was Wally West's idea of how to defeat um, the Darkest Knights in speed metal. Not Barry Allen's. Barry Allen had to trust him to lead, and Wally West led. Well, that's just because DC fans have been moaning about them crapping on Wally West for so long. Yeah, been crapping on Wally West for a long well, time because he's not a good character. Been. They have been, and they have dragged Wally West through stuff that you're like, why in the world did you? What are you people doing? I mean, when they've had him like totally lost in the speed force forever, that was right? Dumb. Just like whoosh, that was a waste. Uh, 
using him as the vehicle to tell the story in uh, the rebirth that for, that was interesting, and I, I, I dug that. I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, but then going through what they put him through and flash forward, it's clear that they don't see him as the Flash anymore. They, they've they got these bigger, grander, weirder designs for him. Uh, or they're just randomly putting the same guy through thing after thing after thing and morphing his character like, into something else. They, the way they've treated him is absolutely ridiculous honestly like you just said man they they keep changing everything from him they, they made him a central character in dc universe rebirth and he was a central character in titans for the first 20 issues of, D, of uh, titans rebirth and then that's because he just- he's a sidekick like the titans are it, it looks like burke is reaching through the screen and he's gonna choke you <laughs> i'm just getting my digs in where i can man he is trying so hard to get me to freak out, and I, I I'm not dusting. <laughs> I'll just I'll just take it. I'll just move on. No, man, this is the this is the part of the show where you get to come out of your shell shell, shell a little bit. I mean, like you and Dustin used to get drunk on every. No, I've never been drunk. Only Dustin. <laughs> I'm far too respectable for that. He doesn't get drunk. He gets stoned. No, I don't do that either. <laughs> I assure you that. I'd rather I'd rather drink. He's like, what is in these mushrooms? They're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, too much coffee though. Um, so, anyways, back to the point where where Wally West is just a sidekick on Titans. Well, is it, they made him like a big player, like he yeah. was the reason like DC Universe Rebirth happened, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, then he goes he to the Titan- cap. What's that? The catalyst, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And and that brought a tear to almost every person's eye that read that book, right? Amazing. Amazing writing by Jeff Jones. He goes to Titans, and he kills it for the first 20 issues. And then they just they get rid of him for however many months, and they bring him back in Heroes of Crisis, and we're like, yeah, we got another Wally West story, right? And what happens? Tom King happens. He takes a poop on him, right? And... <laughs> <laughs> and they come back and we get flash forward, which was amazing. That's the true. Art, I do drink tea. The art by Brett Booth, who also did Titans before that, and he did um, New 52 Flash for a while with the with the future Flash stuff. Um, incredible. The way that he draws Wally West is incredible. His art is insane. And then, again, he goes away for a little bit. And then he comes back because the 5G, 5G thing changed everything. And then he comes back. And uh, he's a central player again in um, Death Metal, right? And then they take out – like Death Metal, that's a whole nother story. But I didn't like the way that ended. Yeah. But he is going to be the main focus of The Flash when we come back from Future State. I don't know if you guys yep. have read the solicits, but yep. he's going to be a main, main focus. But again, even if you, in the Future State, they made him a bad guy by killing people because he was overtaken by famine. And he got, uh, he uh, killed Barry Allen in that book. So in a in future state flash number two. So I do not like, like you said, I don't like the way they've morphed this character whatsoever. It's ridiculous. Honestly, I understand characters go through uh, changes, but it's almost like they're doing it on a purpose. They're like, okay, we're going to get all the uh, Wally West fans to read it, but then we're just going to piss them off and have something else for them to talk about. And we'll do it again. And we'll do it again. We'll do it again. I was hoping you would have some insight maybe into where you think they're going with all this business that they'd started there at the end of flash forward. Uh, and this integration with Dr. Manhattan and the Mobius chair and all that stuff. Where, where are they going with that? Cause I look at this and it doesn't seem like they have a plan. It sounds like they did have a plan and then they didn't because Dan Didio was gone. Dan Didio was gone. So they changed it. They, it changed up the whole 5G thing. And I he, think, yeah, it went from 5G to, 5G to future state, right? Yeah. It feels like future state is just like a gap where they're like, okay, we've had all these really cool ideas in the past. Let's just throw them all together, alternate stuff, and call it future state, and let's figure out what we're going to do later. When, when DC moved offices from New York to California, and they had that two months of absolute and utter garbage that was called Convergence, 
Oh. Future State feels like it was put together with that same kind of like, oh, we got to cover down for two months. Let's just do this. <laughs> yeah, now, some of the books have been really good, which I honestly did not expect. But again, some of the books I thought were going to be really good have been, for me, total duds. I mean, what's interesting is that they brought a lot of TV and movie people in to write a lot of these books. Yep. And it brought in new new ideas and new ways to set scenes. And it's been good, you know. Um, but I've really enjoyed it. I want to see more of it. And we are going to get more of it. Um, but I, I am looking forward to tying in coming back on Batman. I am looking yeah. forward to Tom Taylor's Nightwing. Yeah. I am looking forward to seeing Wally West be a central player again. And the Flash books coming back because the last two books of the Flash right before Future State were absolute booty, horrible. So yeah, they were know. booty. They were they were, but they they were terrible. Oh man, that's funny. Well, I was unfortunately unable to get a rise out of you, which is fine. We didn't see the Burke nasty I was kind of hoping for, but I'm glad we finally got to have an actual conversation, just me sending you money and throwing jabs at you uh, via Super Chats, which I don't think you entirely mind because you're getting the Super Chats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you yeah, you guys are my friends. I would never say anything rude about you or Dustin whatsoever. Ever. You certainly should say something about Dustin. No. No. He's my boy. He's a Power Rangers fan. Well, the thing is, man, if you just say uh, rude things to both of them about each other, uh, then you're all good. As long as you like equal opportunity insults. Well, how do you think Justin got so far? Well, at least I'm not the one that uh, called him adorable. So <laughs> <laughs> I love that little dude. I'm assuming that Barry Allen got more votes, and that's fine. I don't care. No, we haven't put it up yet. So oh. that, that's what I was going to wrap up and say, like. I'm only going to say one more thing is if it wasn't for Barry Allen and showcase Four, comic books may have not actually continued. I mean, he brought in the silver age of comics. Sure. He reinvigorated man. That's I cannot talk tonight. He reinvigorated comic books in the fifties. Barry Allen's the man. Barry Allen is the man. He's not better than See, this. Is a, this isn't a good argument. You and Josh are not good at this. You have to pick, pick your side. You cannot give any leeway, and then you got to let the Burke Nasty come out. And that's what I think why Dustin and I, people enjoy watching us fight. Because even if I do actually, like, I, I think Wally West is a great character. I really do. I think he has awesome story arcs. I agree with everything you said. We're, d we're done with the argument piece, so I'll, I'll come out and agree now. But because I knew we were going to argue, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to give any. And you and you and Josh start off the argument going, well, yeah, Barry Allen's cool, and I love him and all this stuff, but here's a few opinions on uh, why not. And I'm like, man, you got to you gotta hold you it. You got to show how you arrive at your conclusion, right? And uh, I, I think Barry Allen's the better Flash character for me. Uh, but at some point, Wally West is so ingrained with so many people, yeah. it's hard not to say that they've got a legit argument. I, I don't agree with their conclusion, but it's a legit argument, and I can't take that away yeah. from them. And from a generational standpoint, I mean, if you read one character book, comic book character from the 80s on, um, you know, for 20 years, obviously Wally, Wally West is, to those folks, I mean, there, there's no no other realization they could come to, I think, than uh, other than Wally West being better. I mean, I kind of want to read a carrot book now. What's a carrot book? I know. I can't talk. Too much coffee tonight. Now oh, I want carrot cake. Carrot cake. <laughs> um, but yes, but I was going to say, so I think Dustin and I, the reason why like that gets so intense is because Dustin is so emotional on things. Even if he remotely agreed with me slightly. He wouldn't say it. No. And well, then I know how to work that. Brothers and know how to get under each other's skin. Yeah. Y'all know how to pick at each other uh, in a way that yeah. only brothers can do. Well, and he comes at it from a different point of view than I do. He come, comes at it from emotions. I come from it from logic. And he doesn't think that way. I don't think emotionally like he does. And then Burke just comes in with a you know a, basically an all-around argument that it's really hard to like say, no, you're wrong because you know it's it's not not wrong. Yes, but it is you're wrong because I I initially like Barry Allen more too. I was Team Barry. 
So and what I, he's saying is that when you mature, you will grow to the same conclusion that he has arrived at. But for this point in your your comic book <laughs> fandom, uh, you're where you should be. You're where you're expected to be. Uh, and one day you will be a more mature fan like Burke, and you will know that Wally West is better. I think that's that was what he's trying to say. But then at some point, 20 years down the road, we're all going to come back and say Barry Allen's the best like you did. Well, I always thought that. I never got on the Wally West train. <laughs> um, yeah, Burke takes the Gandhi approach. And I'm I'm over here trying to get, get the Burke nasty out of him. And we're getting the Gandhi approach. Um, but it's all good. It was a, it was a fun conversation. I like them both. And it is, it is nice to be able to talk about it versus, you know, arguing or whatever. One super chat. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to stop, though. I can never stop throwing up, throwing them up there and saying that the Barry's I'm better. I'm surprised you didn't put that uh, 139 out, dude. Oh, you talk, are you talking about the uh, mine, the reverse flash? Yeah. Well, he's got it right back there too, right? Don't you, Burke? Yeah, I got a, but mine's only like a 2.0. Yours looks like a 4.0 grade or higher. Yeah, we'll see. I may get it. About that, yeah. I, I may get it pressed and sent off, but I don't know. I kind of like the way it is, man. It's special. Mine's Mine has a. Uh, drawing on the front and back and i don't care i mean, like i would prefer it to be higher gray but it's like first appearance of the reverse flash i don't care and it's in the season two case now can we so. can we all, can we all agree that he's the better character out of all of them the reverse flash yeah he is like um killmonger yeah. killmonger was the best part of the black panther movie i think so and i think the reverse flash is by uh was it was interesting uh, yeah, of, of the TV show. Yeah. I'll tell you the TV show, and I know we're going to wrap up. We're going to do the super chat drawing real quick, and then we'll wrap up. But I did want to say on the, the 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 TV show, I'm with you. I loved it. I've watched every episode up until middle of last season uh, because it just got to where it was the same thing with like the same conversations about Barry not trusting people and and the same. Like I, I kind of got over the CW-ness of the show. But, sure. man, I, I was hooked. I mean, I, I don't know you if just you have Better right. episode ever than what the Flash had for their very first pilot episode. Say that one more time. I don't know if you could have a better pilot episode, yeah, comic book TV show than the Flash had, yeah, the very first season. And Grant Gustin, it was a phenomenal choice. He's a phenomenal actor, um, singer. He seems like a really good dude too, and he got yeah. bulkier for this next season. So we yeah. actually get a bulky flash yeah hey what's up myth myth lab music hope you're doing well man hope you're doing well um all right and then we had one other thing and i'll let you guys go michael b jordan was the best part of black panther how come on michael b jordan is the best part of any movie he's in let's be he's real an actor dude he was so yeah. good at friday night lights <laughs> so yeah great show uh dewey day trader what 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 do you and tosh want what do you want me to sell you? I want you to sell me a Flash 110. Uh, as soon as I get one, you got dibs. Okay. I tell you, I had a guy walk in the store today. Um, this is uh, clearly he saw WandaVision yesterday, right? He walks in the store today, and he's trying to play it all cool. And he says, uh, hey, uh do you have Fantastic Four number 94 by any chance? Mm. Because I, that's I one of only a handful of books I need left to finish my Fantastic Four collection, and I'm really looking for that. I've been looking for that for a long time. I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm sure you have. You need to put a sign on your door that says, I have the key collector app, so that people, when they come in there and do that, they know like you're no, you're, you're yeah, no stupid you know. comic shop owner. Well, I, I just sent off a copy of it to CGC uh, last Saturday. And, and 185 is the other one people are thinking because it's the uh, warlock of Agatha, um, her son. That's his first appearance. Yep. But you um, don't have that one. I do not. You're, I do you, not. you stop with your Fantastic Four like mid-140s. Yeah, that's where that run I bought, uh, that collection yeah. I got ended. Because yeah. I come through there and I flip through your Fantastic Four, your Flash, your Thor, and your Captain America every time I'm there thinking I'm finally going to see something that like, I really want to like, cause I finally bought that tales of suspense. I don't know if you saw it. Um, where, where, where'd it go? Yeah. I finally bought this one. I've been looking at it every time I come in. Oh, great one. Yeah. 
so I bought it Friday along with those Submariners that Dustin couldn't have. <laughs> but uh, Funny. yeah, Josh has been putting Submariners in my pull box for Dustin, and I just bought them all, so he couldn't have them. Ain't that wrong? Spite, spite purchases. Yeah, you guys are hilarious, man. Um. Oh, that's weird. I didn't know that was like that. Did you know that? Look, the little plastic or paper comes off on the old cases. What? I have seen. I've seen the old cases do that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that one. What was it? That. First gen, right? Yeah, it's like they're the bad CBC, old CBCSs types. But all right, guys, well, let's do this real quick. Let's do the super chat. Oh, um, uh, what now? We super didn't get chat. the vote. See what the audience does. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. So audience, vote Wally West or Barry Allen. What you think is the better flash? We'll tally them up and see. Um, what? Uh, there like a link. What now? Or a link, or did they just put it in the chat? Just make a comment. We're not. We're not that fancy. We're not like those game shows. Dustin goes on where you have to vote, mm. and then Dustin texts all his friends and goes, "Hey man, can you vote for me a thousand times?" I'm just kidding. All right. So, and I, like I said, I think you know if everybody likes this, this is what we may continue to do. If you super chat a dollar ninety nine or more, we'll throw you in a um super chat box and send something out for the you know night just as a thank you to everybody who does at least give something back to you guys and in this tonight's box department of truth number one the variant i'm not sure which variant but it is a variant um and uh every time it's a dollar nine or more you get a second or third or whatever so beans is in there twice because he put up uh multiple so click to spin whoever wins wins and i will send it off to you yeah, do you have beans? Uh, came on to the Haven Comics quiz show. He was in the comment uh, comments uh, Thursday night. That was awesome to see him. There, there you go. All right, CJ. So you won tonight, and I will get your address from Dustin because I think he has it, or you, actually, he shops it back to back. Um, and then I'll, I'll send you your box of comics with that one in there. So, do you have that, uh, Department of Truth number one Hutchinson cover that you guys revealed. I think we already put that in because we only got one. Um, and I think we already put that in the bro box one of the months. I'll have to check. But that one was nice. I bet you. I wonder if that one will sold out, dude. Like within 24 hours, I want to say. Yeah, all of the Megan Hutchison stuff has been selling out, which is like crazy to me. Hey, Josh, look. Uh, yeah, I saw that. I was digging that. Oh, and speaking of which, I think the Cobra Commander title just came out for uh, uh, the, the, the Wu Tang Clan cover i think that finally started shipping so uh once we get that one I'll, I'll, I'll get it over to you for the gi joe i know that was one you really wanted and then i think justin too because he worked on the book right that's the one he worked on i think uh, that was one snake eyes uh yeah he's been doing the snake eyes uh yep. whatever that is the rob liefeld book josh the show was fun and awesome all right guys well we had a good time. we have a good time on there yeah dustin sucks though I'm just kidding. I would just randomly jump in and be like, man, you're ugly. And then he'd be like, hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. Cause like, I just think that's a funny comment because how do you respond to that? Like, no, I'm actually very pretty. You know what I mean? Kind of put right, you in a yeah. situation. It's like, no, <laughs> Nick, I'm very pretty actually. Um, what's, anyway, the, what's the age difference between you and us? Four years and five years, depending on the time of year. So you're same, like, same as me, my older brother. Brother. what now? You're 28? No, I'll be 20. I'm 27. Am I 27? I'm getting old. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think we're five years apart at, as of this moment, and then in July it'll be four, and then in November it turns back to five. So, you know, it's like, what, four and a half? Oh, that's right. Justin and I have birthdays in the same month. Yeah. So. And you um, both are Power Rangers and Turtles fans. Yeah. Uh, we are. I, I think I'm a year older than Dustin. I'm 33. Thank you, Ronnie. That's interesting. No, I'm trying to get him on the gram. I'm trying. I'm going to have to bite the bullet and, and do it. And, of course, the minute I do, everybody's going to leave Instagram for whatever the new the new platform is, and I'll be sitting over there by myself like, uh, you, hey, guys. The, uh, the We do day. have some dark ring duck, yes. The day that Ruben Guzman gets Instagram, he'll go from like his very first post, zero followers, 
to like a thousand in like one post because yeah. everyone will be so happy to see Ruben on Instagram. See, Haven needs an Instagram. And I told him, you know, that's that's how that's gonna be real helpful for that show he grows. And he'll be able to sell a ton of books. But see, Josh doesn't like to get rid of some of the slabs, man. I know what you do. You've talked about it. You're like, I need some of those. And when I saw this one, like you haven't had that one up there a second. No, no, not long at all. So, but anyways, yeah. well, guys, if, if you're in the chat, go please check out Burke Family 54 Comics. Mr. Burke Nasty. Burke, I do appreciate you being on here. Yeah, man, it was fun. I'm sorry I was a little bit late, but it was a good it's time. okay. I babbled endlessly in circles with myself for the first hour, and it was quite strange, but we made it through. I'm not like Dustin. I can't have conversations with my – like Dustin, he's good at that. He can do these streams by himself, have fun with the chat, and I'm using this new thing, and – from you guys see it on your end, like it does not look anything like StreamYard. It's weird. But so are you guys off StreamYard completely now? And only not completely. This is actually the first time we're using it because I wanted to be the first guy. Because if I gave this to Dustin and he didn't know how to do it, he would have just ended the stream and went back to StreamYard, and it would have been a thing. Um, but I mean, again, 1080p, having no issues with audio, video, none of that. Um, and like I said, right now it's right about 1250 until it goes up to full price because it's still in beta uh, and it's made by the same people same people that do stream elements so uh or stream labs um so i mean it's it's going to be a really really solid product and i had an issue and the response i got back was within an hour about how they were going to fix the problem so um, wow. i mean 50 bucks on Streamyard a month to stream 1080p or 1250 uh and that price is locked in for life so that's locked why in for life yeah. So for right now, so that's why I'm going and it's called Melon uh, by Streamlabs or Stream Elements, whatever it is. So um, I have to switch over because I mean, if I can s save ten, twelve dollars a month times twelve months, I mean that's a hundred bucks. Yeah, for sure. So and like I said, it's still in beta. It's not perfect, but you know, it certainly is. It's getting there in audio. Yeah. And then one of the other issues is like I can't do overlays with pictures, but I'll probably just do like a Premiere Pro drop the audio or drop the picture in and, and use it like as a soundless video or something for a second. But that stuff they're all going to be adding. And I'm hoping we're going to get hotkeys soon so I can start using like a stream deck and stuff. So, um, but we'll see. Like I said, for the money and yeah. I'm going to use some hot hotkeys and drop a stream deck, yo. I'd be like, what is that nonsense? I don't really do overlays on my streams, man. I really well, like whenever you're you're showing a picture of yeah. a book cover or something like that, that's you know basically an overlay is what I'm saying. So you can't sure. do that yet. So you just have the screen share from over. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't like doing the screen share as much. It just looks weird to me. But I don't know. Streamyard was dude. They're making bank off people, dude. They're charging yeah. way too much. It's ridiculous. It absolutely is. Um, so, and like, like, you know, we, we, we've spoken about it before, but like, it's not cheap to do a lot of this stuff. The stream yard, no. you know, paying for Adobe every month. I mean, stuff like that is not cheap. No, um, not. so, but anyways, well, check out Burke nasty, check out Haven comics. They both do amazing things. Um, and, uh, so, oh, I, I thought I was still sharing my screen. Um, and then CJ Mohorn, congratulations on winning. Um, and what I'm doing to prepare for the fight, I'm just, you know, I'm not real sure. I'm just going to keep trying to lose some weight and not. You got to keep that padding. protective padding on your ribs, bro. Yeah. <laughs> something. I don't know. I need to do I, something. I had a buddy one time, uh, he was having a real bad day and he just was desperate to punch somebody. And he's like, I just want to hit somebody as hard as I can. And I mean, I got an older brother. I've been in a lot of fights and I was like, it's been a long time since I've, you know, been in a fight or anything. I said, uh, yeah, go ahead, man. Just let me have it hard as you can. And he's like, are you, you serious? I'm like, yeah, go for it. And he goes, you're not going to hit me back. I'm like, no, I'm not going to hit you back. Uh, and he's like, okay. And he rears back and I braced myself cause I knew it was coming. So it wasn't like I was getting a shot out of nowhere and he punches me in the gut and then he grabs his wrist and starts hollering, uh, because he sprained his wrist, punching me in the gut. Oh, my gosh. Man, that's cool. Uh, yeah, it, it was bad. Wow. Well, all right, you guys. Well, I will let you all get off of here. Um, I know it went. I'm not really a bully. You get out of here with that. I'm the nicest so person. Right 
Oh, he, someone said Dusty. Dustin <laughs> does not like people calling him Dusty. He will freak out if someone. Wait till he hears that Josh called him adorable. Adorable Dusty. He got called. I did not call him Dusty, but I did say he was adorable. He got called Dusty and adorable tonight. Oh Don't my think God. he won't get an emoji made and it'll pop up next weekend and it's just going to be adorable Dusty. By the way, guys, how do y'all like the new thumbs up as the members? I thought that was really cool. I got a Wolverine one, a Captain, I think Captain America. What are they? They're pretty cool. Yeah, Iron Man, yeah. Spider-Man, Wolverine thumbs up. Somebody was commenting earlier that there needs to be a saber tooth. Look, we we all know here Sabretooth is not a real comic book character of any value. <laughs> See, I need Dustin to be here so he can respond back to these. I got it's, nothing. It's just not the same. You guys, <laughs> you're the best. Burke, what you got going on this week? Uh, well, I got, I got so. Well, I got so. I will say that I have a ton of of my variants of ship outs. A yep. ton. I'm only shipping that out. I got some comic books you need to invest in this week. I got some unboxings. I got my Thursday night live stream, which will actually this week be an auction. So if you want to come on uh -oh. by books, that's happening on Thursday. Um, yeah, that's what I'm Dustin, doing. Dustin's all in on those auctions now, man. I know he's he's doing it like every week now, trying to sell stuff to buy more stuff, which I totally get. Yeah. I'm just trying to sell stuff so I have more room in my house. Well, like, what you need to do is just take up with Jeremy Broda and get a, new, a bigger house. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, we're getting close because this garage is getting cold in here. Oh, that's right. I forgot you had to, you, you got kicked out. I had to vacate. So what? I had to vacate my, uh, my, my comic book office. So, why? Because when I told you when COVID hit, my wife needed an office to work. From oh, home. that's right. That's yeah. right. So, it is what it is. It, it's you would never know I'm in a garage though. No. So, but like my table saw is right here. My chops or my chop saw, uh, my my um, chop saw is a metal metal cutting saw. Um, my wow, basically the wood woodworking version of a chop saw. I cannot remember what it's called. Anyways, but all my woodworking stuff's here where I make the bro box. Sawdust everywhere. They, uh, they call you the, uh, the 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 techie guy. But see, woodworking can be very technical. It can be. Yeah. You got to do those yeah. angles right. That's right. I built coffee table. I have some cool. I need to post to pick some pictures of some of the stuff I built. I haven't been able to do it much since Ellie was born, but. I enjoy it. There's nothing better than starting on a project from start to finish. Like when I was done with hanging those slabs at your uh, shop, jo Josh, like you just feel good afterwards. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. I and know that I, I feel very good when <laughs> other people do work like that afterwards. It was funny when I bought this, I, the guy, he had to jump up on the little stool and he goes, and I asked him, I said, where's the, the, the step stool Josh bought you guys where it wasn't so difficult for y'all to get up here? I don't know. I guess he took it somewhere. I'm like, man, it's right there next to Thanos, man. It was, and in, in in his in his defense, it was not um, back there. So I looked and I didn't see it either. Um, I mean, it's there today. I, I saw it today. I, I told him I was like, man, Josh, Josh, better be careful. And then the poor guy was freezing because you know everybody was losing oh heat. And God, stuff. Yeah, our heater, our heater was out all week. Yeah. It just got fixed yesterday. Dude, I spent like 35 minutes in there on Wednesday or whenever it was, and like my hands were cold. So I told him, I said, I got to get out of here. My hands are hurting. Um, yeah, we, it was cold, and I felt very bad for him, but uh, he was a trooper. How cold is it right now in, uh, where you guys are at, Alabama? Uh, it's not so bad right now, but it was uh, Tuesday. Yep. Our high was 19 degrees. Yeah. So we were negative 15 where are you in Kansas, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got that wind sweeping across the plain there. We don't have that problem, but uh, we're also not equipped to deal with it at all. Uh, you get a half inch of ice or snow, and everybody freaks out, buys milk, bread, and eggs because of the official meal of cold weather is apparently French toast. Uh, 
So Dustin stole a step stool. <laughs> well, here and then um, it's actually, Dan, I wasn't talking about a hacksaw. I was talking about a miter saw. So that's on me. Okay. No, not taking out a second mortgage, my friend. New way. I already need no, to get it's bad enough. You sure don't need a second one. No. So, all right, Josh, what you got going on this week? I know we're going to have Haven Comics live on Thursday. Yes, we got the Haven Comics quiz show. It's a trivia show, mostly about comics and nerd stuff. I mean, sometimes it's real nerd stuff like NASA because we're in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, we've got uh, the Marshall Space Flight Center right down the street. And if you're home of the Space Force. Right, and people around here, uh, you know, that whole idea, well, it ain't rocket science. We got rocket scientists coming out our ears around here. Uh, it's insane. You can't walk down the street without tripping over a dozen of them. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so we ask some NASA kind of questions periodically. Uh, but yeah, we have a good time with it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we have a guest on and we ask questions and every single prize has a, a or every single question has a prize associated with it. And if our guest answers the question, the guest gets the prize. If they don't get it right, then the people in the chat get a shot at it. Right. And then the first person who gets the answer right in the chat wins the prize. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we give away a lot of stuff every week. Uh, <laughs> A lot. We go through it. We go through it, but it's a lot of fun. We've been having a good time with it. And if you're a fan of the USA, you got to show up and, and talk some crap. So that's my favorite thing to do. Just dropping some U S flags in there for Jeremy. Yeah. We have a, a Canadian question every week because our prize cam is uh, Canadian. And uh, so she, and, yeah. and she likes to, to push some Canadian stuff. So we have a good time with it. And every time we have the Canadian question of the week, you can always count on Nick being in there like, USA, USA. That's right. <laughs> yeah, Austin, I do got to expand the PC, man. Certainly got to expand it, but um, I'll get out of here, Ryan. Get out of here with that. But all right, guys. Well, we went a little long, but we do appreciate it. It is the Babylon, and that's what we did. Um, go check out these two descriptions. Or links are in the descriptions below. Um, you all are, of course, the best part of Two Brothers Comics. Berg, Josh, you you want to hit him with it? And as always, collect your way. Collect your way. Oh, come on. There's no enthusiasm. Let's get some Berg nasty on him. <laughs>